Hello friends, today I am here with new book named Who Will Cry When You Die by the great writer Mr. Robin Sharma. Chapter 1. Discover Your Calling When I was growing up, my father said something to me I will never forget. Son, when you were born, you cried while the world rejoiced. Live your life in such a way that when you die, the world cries while you rejoice. We live in an age when we have forgotten what life is all about. We can easily put a person on the moon, but we have trouble walking across the street to meet a new neighbor. We can fire a missile across the world with pinpoint accuracy, but we have trouble keeping a date with our children to go to library. We have email, fax, machines and digital phones so that we can stay connected, yet we live in a time where human beings have be never been less connected. We lost touch with our humanity. We have lost touch with our purpose. We have lost sight of the things that matter the most. And so, as you start this book, I respect. I respectfully ask you, who will cry when you die? How many lives you are going to touch while you have the privilege to walk this planet? What impact will you have on your life, on the generation that follow you? And what legacy you will leave behind after you have taken your last breath? One of the lessons I have learned in my own life is that if you don't act on life, life has habit on acting on you. The days slip into weeks, weeks slip into months, and the months slip into the years. Pretty soon, it's all over and you are left with nothing more than a heart filled with regret over half-lived. Mr. George Bernard Shaw was asked on his deathbed, what would you do if you could live your life over again? He reflected, then replied with a deep sigh. I'd like to the person I could have been but never was. I've written this book so that this will never happen to you. As a professional speaker, I have spent much of my work living with and delivering keynote addresses at the conferences across North America, flying from city to city, sharing my insights of leadership in business and life with many different people. Though they all come from diverse walks of life and their questions invariably center on the same thing these days. How can I find greater meaning in my life? How can I make a lasting contribution through my work? And how can I simplify so that I can enjoy the journey of life before it's too late? My answer always begins the same way. Find your calling. I believe we all have special talents that are just waiting to be engaged in a worthy pursuit. We are all here with some unique purpose, some noble objective that will allow us to manifest our highest human potential while we, at the same time, add value to the lives around us. Finding your calling doesn't mean that you must leave the job you now have. It simply means you need to bring some more of yourself into your work and focus on the thing you do best. It means you have to stop waiting for the other people to make changes you desire and as Mahatma Gandhi noted, be the change that you wish to see most in your world and once you do, your life will change. Chapter 2 Every Day Be Kind to a Stranger On his deathbed, Aldous Huxley reflected on his entire life's learning and then summed it up in seven simple words. Let us be kinder to one another. All too often, we believe that in order to live a truly fulfilling life, we must achieve some great act or a grand feat that will put us on the front covers of magazines and newspapers. Nothing could be further from the truth. A meaningful life is made up of a series of daily acts of a decency and kindness which ironically add up to something truly great over the course of a lifetime. Everyone who enters your life has a lesson to teach and a story to tell. Every person you pass during the moments that make your up days represent an opportunity to show a little more of the compassion and courtesy that define your humanity. Why you not start being more of the person you truly are during your days and doing what you can enrich the world around you? In my mind, if you make even one person smile during your day or brighten the mood of even one stranger, your day has been worthwhile one. Kindness, quite is simply, is the rent you must pay for the space we occupy on this planet. Become more creative in the ways you show compassion to strangers, paying the toll for the person in the car behind you, 
offering your seat on the subway to someone in need and being in the first one to say hello are great, great places to start. Recently, I received a letter from the reader of The Monk Who Sold His Parari who lives in Washington State. In it, she wrote, I have a practice of teaching to people who have helped me along my spiritual path. Please accept the enclosed check of rupees dollar uh, one thousand with my blessing and gratitude. I quickly responded to her generous by sending one of my audio tape program in return so that she received value for the gift she sent me. Her gesture was a great lesson in the importance of giving sincerely from the heart. Chapter 3 Maintain Your Perspective One day, according to an old story, a man with a serious illness was wheeled into a hospital room where another person was resting on a bed next to the window. As the two became friends, the one next to window would look out of it and then spend the next few hours delight, delighting his bedridden companion with vivid description of the world outside. Some days he would describe the beauties of the tree in the park, across the hospital and how the leaves danced in the wind. On other days, he would entertain his friends by step-by-step -step replays of the things people were doing as they walked by the hospital. However, as the time went on, the bedridden man grew frustrated at his inability to observe the word wonders that the friends described. Eventually, he grew to least like them and then hate him intensely. One night, during a particular bad coughing to the next stranger, the patient next to the window stopped breathing. Then, uh, rather than pressing the button for help, other man chose to do nothing. The next morning, the patient who had given his friend so much happiness by recounting the sights out of the window was pronounced dead and wheeled out of hospital room. The other man quickly asked that his bed to be placed next to the window, request that was compiled with attending nurse. But as he looked out of window, he discovered something that made him shake. At the window faced a stark brick wall. His former roommate, a roommate had conjured up the incredible sights that he described in his imagination as a loving gesture to make the world of his friends a little bit better during a difficult time. He had acted out of selfless love. This story never fails to create a shift in my own perspective when I think about it. To live happier, more fulfilling life, when we encounter a difficult circumstance, we must keep shifting our perspective and continually ask ourselves, is there a wiser, more enlightened way of looking at this? seemingly negative situation. Stephen Hawking, one of the greatest physicists ever, is reported to have said that we live on a minor planet of very average star located within the outer limit of 100,000 million galaxies. How that's for a shift in perspective? Given this information, are, you troubles that, are your troubles really that big? Are the problems you have experienced or the challenge you might currently be facing really as serious as you have made them out to be. We walk this planet for a short time. In the overall scheme of things, our lives are made mere blips of the canvas of the inner eternity. So have the wisdom to enjoy the journey and savor the process. Chapter 4 Practice Tough Love The golden thread of highly successful and meaningful life is self-discipline. Discipline allows you to do all those things you know in your heart you should do but never feel doing like that. Without self-discipline, you will never not set goals, manage your time effectively, treat people well, persist through the tough times, care for your health or think positive thoughts. I call the habit of self-discipline tough love because getting tough with yourself is actually a very loving gesture. Being stricter with yourself you will begin to live life more deliberately on your own terms rather than simply reacting to the life the way a leaf floating in the stream drifts according to the flow of the current on a particular day. As I teach in one of my seminars, the tougher you are on yourself, the easier life will be on you. The quality of your life is ultimately shaped by the quality of your choices decisions, ones that range from the career you choose to pursue to the books you read and the time that you wake up at the morning and the thoughts you have to think during the hours of your days. When you consistently flex your willpower by making those choices, 
that you know are right ones rather than easy ones, you take back control of your life. Effective, fulfilled people do not spend their time doing what is most convenient and comfortable. They have the courage to listen to their hearts and to do the wise thing. This habit is what makes them great. The successful person has the habit of doing the things failure don't like to do, remarked essayist and thinker E. M. Gray. They don't like doing them either necessarily, but their disliking is subordinated to the strength of their purpose. The 19th century English writer Thomas Henry Huxley arrived at similar conclusion, noting, Perhaps the most valuable result of all education is the ability to make yourself do the thing you have to do, when it is ought to be done, whether you like it or not. And Aristotle made this point of wisdom in yet another way. Whatever we learn to do by actually doing it, men come to the builders, for instance, by building and harp players by playing the harp. In the same way, by doing just acts, we come to be just. By doing control acts, we come to be self-controlled. By doing brave acts, we come to be brave. Chapter 5. Keep a Journal Maintaining a daily journal is one of the best personal growth initiatives you will ever take. Writing down your daily experiences along with the lessons you have drawn from them will make you wiser with each passing day. You will develop self-awareness and make fewer mistakes. And keeping a journal will help clarify your intentions so that you remain focused on the things that truly really count. Writing in a journal offers you the opportunity to have regular one-on-one -on -one conversation with yourself. It forces you to do deep thinking in a world where deep thinking is the best thing of the past. It will also make you a clearer thinker and help you live in a more intentional and enlightened way. In addition, it provides a central place where you can record your insights on important issues. Note, key success strategies have worked for you and commit to all those things you know are important to achieve a high quality professional, personal, spiritual life and your personal journal gives you a private place to flex your imagination and define your dreams a journal is not a diary a diary is a place where you record events while journal is a place where you analyze them and evaluate them keeping a journal encourages you to consider what you do why you do it and what you have learned from all you have done and writing in a journal promotes personal growth and wisdom by you, a forum to study and then leverage your past for greater success in your future. Medical researchers even have found that writing in a private journal for as little time as 15 minutes a day can improve your health, functioning of your immune system and your overall attitude. Remember, if your life is worth thinking about, it is worth writing about. Chapter 6 Develop an honesty philosophy. We live in a world of broken promises. We live in a time when people treat their words lightly. We tell a friend we will call her next week for lunch knowing full well we do not have the time to do so. We promise our co-worker we will bring in that new book we love so much but knowing full well that we never lend out our books. And we promise ourselves this will be the year when we will get back into shape Simplify our lives and have more fun without any real intention of making the deep changes life necessary to achieve these goals. Saying things we don't really mean becomes a habit when we've practiced it long enough. The real problem is that when you don't keep your word, you lose your credibility. When you lose your credibility, you break the bonds of trust and breaking the bonds of trust ultimately leads to the string of broken relationship. To develop an honesty philosophy, Begin to monitor how many small untruths you tell over the course of a week. Go on what I call a truth fast for the next 7 days and vow to be completely honest in all your dealings with other and with yourself. Every time you fail to do the right thing, you fuel the habit of doing the wrong thing. Every time you do not tell the truth, you feed the habit of being untruthful. When you promise someone you will do something to do it, do it. Be a person of your word rather than being all talk and no action. As Mother Teresa said, there should be less talk, a preaching point is not a meeting point. What do you do then? Take a broom and clean someone's house. That says enough. Chapter 7. 
honor your past. Every second you dwell on the past, you steal from your future. Every minute you spend focusing on your problems, you take away from finding a solution. And thinking about all those things that you wish never happened to you is actually blocking all the things you want to happen from entering into your life. Given the timeless truth that holds that you become what you think about all day long, it makes no sense to worry about past events or mistakes unless you want to experience them for a second time. Instead, we use the lessons you have learned from the past to rise a whole new level of awareness and enlightenment. Life's greatest setback reveal life's biggest opportunities. As the ancient thinker Euripides noted, there is the worst of fortune that best changes for a happy change. If you have suffered more than your fair share in of difficulties in life, perhaps you are being prepared to serve some greater purpose that will require you to be equipped with wisdom you have acquired through your trials. Use these life lessons to fuel your growth, future growth. Remember, happy people have often experienced as much as adversity as those who are unhappy. What sets them apart is that they have good sense to manage their memories in a way what enriches their lives. And understand, if you have failed more than others, there is a very good chance that you are living more completely than others. Those who take more chances and dare to become more and do more than others will naturally experience more failures. But personally, I would rather have the bravery to try something and then fail than never to have tried at all. I would much prefer spending the rest of my days expanding my human frontiers and trying to make the seemingly impossible probable than living a life of comfort, security and mediocrity. That's the essence of true life success. As Herodotus noted so sagely, it is better to be noble boldness to run the risk of being subject to half of the evils we anticipate than to remain in cowardly listenlessness for fear of what may happen. Or as Booker T. Washington said, I have learned that success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles he has overcome while trying to succeed. Chapter 8. Start your day well. The way you begin your day determines the way you will live your day. I will call first 30 minutes after you wake up the Platinum 30. Since they are truly the most valuable moments of your day and have profound influence on the qualities of every minute that follows. If you have the wisdom and self-discipline to ensure that during this key period, you think only the purest thoughts and take only the finest of actions, you will notice that your days will consistently unfold in the most marvelous days. Recently, I took my two young children to see the thrilling IMAX movie Everest. Aside from the breathtaking imagery and the powerful act of heroism portrayed, there was one point that stayed with me in order for the mountain climbers to scale the summit, it was essential for them to have a good base camp. It was impossible for them to get at the top without the camp at the bottom that offered them sanctuary for the rest, renewal and refreshing. Once they reached the camp too, then they returned to the base for a few weeks to recharge their batteries. On re reaching the camp 3, they hastily retreated to base camp to prepare for the camp 4. And on reaching on the camp 4, they again went down the mountain to base camp before making their final push for the summit. In the same way, I think that every one of us, in order to reach our personal summit and master the daily challenges of our own lives, need to revisit the base camps of the Platinum 30. We need to go to a place where we can reconnect to our life's mission, renew ourselves and refocus on the things that matter most. In my own life, I have developed a very effective morning ritual that consistently gets my day off to a joyful and peace-filled start. After waking, I head down to my personal sanctuary, a little space I have created for myself where I can practice my renewal activities without being disturbed. Then I spend my 15 minutes in silent contemplation, focusing all the good things in my life and envisioning the day I expect is about to unfold. Next, I pick up a book from the wisdom literature, one 
rich with those timeless truth of successful living that are so easy to forget in these fast paced time we live in example include meditation by roman philosopher marcus aurelius the autobiography of benjamin franklin and walden by henry david thoreau the lessons in these works center me on the things that truly count and help launch my day on the right footing and the wisdom i read during that precious early morning period infuses and enlightens every remaining minute of my day so start your day well you will never be the same chapter 9 learn to say no gracefully it is easy to yes say yes to every request on your time when the priorities of your life are unclear when your days are not guided by a rich and inspiring vision for your future a clear image of an end result that will help you act more intentionally it is not hard for the agendas of those around you to dictate your actions as i wrote leadership wisdom from the monk who sold his ferrari if your priorities don't get scheduled into your planet other people's priorities will get into your planner others people priorities will get into your planner the solution is to be clear about your life's highest objectives and then to learn to say no with grace the chinese sage chao zhu told the story of a man who forged swords for maharaja even at the age of 90 his work was carried out with exceptional precision and ability no matter how rushed he was he never made even the slightest slip one day the maharaja asked the old man is this a natural talent or it is there some special technique that you use to create your remarkable results it is concentration on the essentials replied the sword crafter i took forging swords when i was 21 year old i did not care anything else if i it was not a sword i did not took at it or pay any attention to it forging swords became my passion and my purpose i took all the energy that i did not give in other direction and put in the direction of my art this is the secret to mastery the most effective people concentrate on their areas of excellence that is on the things they do the best on those high impact activities that will advance their life work it is being so consumed by the important things they find it easy to say no to less than worthy distractions that claim for their attention michael jordan the best basketball player in the game's history did not negotiate his contracts design his uniform and prepare his travel schedule he focused on his time and energies what he did the best playing basketball and delegate everything to do his handlers jazz great louis armstrong did not spend his time selling ticket to his shows and setting up chair for the audience he considered concentrated the point of brilliance playing the trumpet learning to say no to the non essentials will give you more time to devote to the things that have power to truly improve the way you live more you live and happy help you to leave the legacy you know in your heart you are destined to leave chapter 10 take a weekly sabbatical in ancient days the seventh week of the day was known as sabbath reserved for some lives most important yet commonly neglected pursuits including spending time with one's family and arts in deep reflection and self renewal it provided a chance for hard working people to renew their batteries and spend a day living life more fully however as the pace of life quickened and the more activities began to compete for people's attention this wonderful tradition was lost among along with the tremendous personal benefits that flowed from it A stress itself is not a bad thing it can often help us perform at our best expand beyond our limits and achieve the things which would otherwise astonish us just ask any elite athlete the real problem lies in the fact that in the age of global anxiety we do not just get enough relief from the stress so to rejuvenate yourself and nourish the deepest part in you plan for a weekly period of peace a weekly sabbatical to get back to the simpler pleasure of life pleasures that you may have given up as your days grew busier and your life more complex bringing this simple ritual into your weeks will help you reduce stress connect with more creative side and feel far happier in every role of your life 
Your weekly sabbatical does not have to last a full day. All you need are a few hours alone, perhaps on a quiet Sunday morning, when you can sometimes do some time when you can spend doing the things you love to do the most. Ideas include spending time in your favorite bookstore, watching the sunrise, taking a solitary walk along a beach, and writing in your journal. Organizing your life so that you get to do more the things you love to do is one of the steps to life improvement. Who cares if others don't understand what you are trying to accomplish by making the weekly sabbatical an essential part of your life? Do it yourself, you are worth it. In the words of theory, if a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it will because he hears a different drummer. Let him to step the music which he hears, however measured or far away. Chapter 11 Talk to Yourself Years ago, when I was a litigation lawyer who had many of the material strapping success, yet little in the way of inner peace, I read a book called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. The book discussed the enormous power of the human mind to shape our reality and attract great happiness and prosperity into our lives. The work also had mentioned the profound influence of the words and language we use on a daily basis to create more enlightened pathway of thought. Fascinated, I began to read more and more wisdom self-help literature. And as I did, I discovered the profound impact on the importance of the words we use in our daily communication both with others and with ourselves, on the quality of our lives. This knowledge also caused me to become aware of the personal dialogue that each of us has been going on within every minute of every hour of day and vow to improve the content of what I was saying to myself. To achieve this, I began to apply a strategy developed by ancient sages over 5000 years ago, and in many ways it changed my life. The technique is a simple one and involves nothing more than selecting a phrase that you will train your mind to focus on at different times throughout the day until it begins to dominate your awareness and reshape the person you are. If it is in a piece and you come, you will seek the phrase known as mantra might be I am so grateful and that I am serene and a tranquil person. If it is more confidence that you want, your mantra could be I am delighted that I am full of confidence and boundless courage. If it is material prosperity, you are after your saying might be I am so grateful that money and opportunity is flowing into my lives. Repeat your mantra softly under your breath as you walk to work, as you wait in line or you wash your dishes to fill otherwise unproductive times of your day with a powerful life improvement force. Try to say your personal phrases at least 200 times a day for at least 4 weeks. The result will be profound as you take one giant step to finding peace, prosperity or purpose your life requires. As Hazrat Inayat Khan said, the words that enlighten the soul are more precious than jewels. Chapter 12 Schedule Worry Breaks After I wrote The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, I was flooded with letters from readers who saw their lives change from the lessons they discovered on becoming happier, more fulfilled and more peaceful in these stress-crazed times. Many of the letters came from the people whose work lives have gone so busy that they spent most of their free time worrying about the things that should have been left at the office. They had lost their ability to laugh, love and share the joy with their families because of the challenge at the work were consuming them. Too many people are spending the best years of their lives stuck in a state of constant worry. They worry about their jobs, the bills, the environment and their kids. And yet, we all know deep in our hearts that most of the thing we worry about never happen. It's like the great saying of Mark Twain's, I had a lot of come trouble in my life of some which actually happened. My father, a particularly wise man who has deep influence on my own life, once told me a Sanskrit character for funeral pyre similar to the Sanskrit character of worry. I am surprised. I replied, you shouldn't be son, he gently offered. One burns the dead while one burns the living. 
I know how dramatically the worry habit can reduce one's quality of life from personal experience. While in my late twenties, I was called so I was on the so-called fast track to success. I had received two law degrees from one of the most prestigious law schools, served as the law clerk for a chief justice, and was handling a highly complex cases as litigation lawyer. But I was often working too hard and worrying too much. I was waking up on Monday morning with a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach and deep sense that I was wasting my talents on work that I was not aligned with the person I was. So I began to searching for the ways to improve my life, turning first to the self-help and life leadership literature, where I found the wealth of a lesson for a more balanced, peace-filled and meaningful existence. One of the most simple strategies I learned to conquer the worry habit was to schedule specific times to worry, what now I call worry breaks. If we are facing a difficulty, it is easy to spend all our waking hours focusing it on it. Instead, I recommend that you must schedule fixed time to worry, say 30 minutes every evening. During the worry session, you may wallow in your problems and brood over your difficulties. But after that period, you must train yourself to leave those troubles behind and do something more productive, such as going for a walk in natural surrounding or reading an inspirational book you love or having a heart to heart conversation with someone you love. If during those times you feel like need to worry, jot down what you want to worry about in a notebook which you can bring then to your next worry break. This simple but powerful technique will help you gradually reduce the amount of time you spend worrying and eventually serve to eliminate this habit forever. Chapter 13 A Model Child Model a Child A while ago, I took my 4-year-old son called by to an Italian restaurant for lunch. It was a beautiful autumn day and as usual, my young son was full of energy. We both ordered pasta for our main course and then started to enjoy the freshly baked bread our waiter brought. Little did I know that Colby was about to teach his father yet another lesson in the art of living. Rather than eating the bread whole as most adults do, Colby took a different, far more creative approach. He began to scoop out the warm, soft part of the bread and left the crust intact. In other words, he had the wisdom to focus on the best part of the bread and leave the rest. Someone once said to me at a seminar, children come to us more highly evolved than adults to teach us the lessons we need to learn. And on that fine day, my little boy reminded that so-called grown-ups, we spend too much time focusing on the crust of the life rather than on all the good things that flow in our out days. We focus on our challenges at the work, the pile of bills we have to pay and the lack of time to do all things we need to do. But our thoughts do form our world and what we think about goes and grow in our life. What we focus on will determine our destiny and so we must start focusing on the good stuff. In the weeks ahead, make the time to connect to your more playful side, the child within you. Take the time to study more positive qualities of children and the model their ability to stay energized, imaginative and completely in the moment no matter what might be going on around you. And as you do, remember the powerful world of Leo Rosen who observed, you can understand and relate to most people better if you look at them, no matter how impressive they may be, as if they are children. For most of us never really grow up or mature all that much, we simply grow taller. Oh, to be sure, we laugh less and play less and wear uncomfortable disguises like adults, but beneath the costume is the child we always are, whose needs are simple, whose daily life is still best described by fairy tales. Chapter 14 Remember, Genius is 99% Inspiration The celebrated inventor Thomas Edison is well known for his statement, Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. While I believe that hard work is essential to a life of real success and fulfillment, I think that being filled with a deep sense of inspiration and commitment to making a difference in the world is an even more important attribute. All of the great geniuses of the world were inspired when they were driven to 
desire to enrich the lives of others. When, when you study their lives, you will discover that this desire became almost an obsession for most of them. It consumed them and occupied every cell of their mind. Edison was inspired to manifest the vision he saw on the picture of his imagination into reality. Jonas Salk, who despaired the polio vaccine, was inspired to help others suffering from this dreaded affliction. And Marie Curie, the great Nobel Prize winning scientist, was inspired to serve humanity through her discovery of radium. As Woodrow Wilson said, you are not here to merely make a living, you are here in order to enable the world to live more amply, with greater vision, with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world and you improve rich yourself in a forget that Iran. How inspired are you in your own life? Do you jump out of bed on Monday morning or you do simply lie there with a sense of emptiness flooding through your body? If your level of inspiration is lower than you know it should be, read a good self-help book or listen to a motivating audio cassette program. Attend a public lecture by someone you admire or spend a few hours by studying the biography of one of your heroes. Start spending the time with people who are passionate about what they are doing in their lives and dedicated to making the best out of their lives. With a healthy dose of inspiration, you will quickly raise your life to a whole new plane of living. Chapter 15 Care for the Temple A few months ago, I had lunch with her colleague in the speaking profession. As we discussed the things we did in our lives to stay focused, balanced at our peaks amid the demands of our busy schedules, he made a powerful point. Robin, he said, Many people go regularly to a church or a temple to stay grounded and centered. I am a little different. I go to the gym. That's my temple. He added, no matter how busy he is, at 5.30 a.m., he closes his office and makes the daily pilgrimage to his gym to run a few miles on the treadmill. Nothing can stop him from taking this time to ensure his health and happiness. My friend's observation made me think about a saying an ancient Roman that I quoted in my first book, Mega Living, Mena Sana in Corpora Sano, which is Latin for in a sound body rests a sound mind. It also made realize that our body needs to be treated like temples and considered sacred if we hope to live life fully and completed regularly. Regular exercise will not only improve your health, it will think, help you think more clearly, boost creativity and manages the relentless stress that seems to dominate our days. And research has proven that exercise will not only Add to your life to your ears, it could add years to your life. One study of 18,000 Harvard alumni found that every hour spent on exercise added three hours to the participant's life. Few investments will yield a better return than sp time spent on physical fitness. And remember, those who not make time for exercise must eventually make time for illness. In my own life, I have set the goal of swimming five times a week. There is something special about the renewing power of swimming that I cannot begin to describe. I wish I could say I achieved the goal every single week, but I can't. Yet, having such a lofty objective keeps me focused on how important staying in peak physical condition is for my overall well-being and to the quality of my life. Without fail, every workout in the swimming pool brings the same result. I feel energized, serene, balanced and happy. And my exercise sessions also bring me something that I feel truly priceless, perspective. After my 40 minutes of swimming, any challenge I might be struggling with seems smaller. Any worries I have become trivial, I find myself living in fully present moment. The act of caring for my physical temple reminds me the life's greatest pleasure are often life's simplest ones. Chapter 16. Learn to be silent. William Wordsworth sagely observed, When from our better sails we have too long been parted by the hurry, hurrying in the world, sick of its business, of its pleasure tired, how gracious, how benign its solitude. When was the last time you made time to be silent and still? When was the last time you carved out a chunk of time to enjoy the powers of solitude to restore 
refocus and reabilitize your mind body and spirit all of the great wisdom traditions in the world have arrived at the same conclusion to reconnect with who you really are as a person and to come to know the glory that rests within you you must find the time to be silent on a regular basis sure you are busy but as theory you said it is not enough to busy so are the ends the question is what are you so busy about the importance of silence make me think about the story of an old lighthouse keeper the man had only limited amount of oil to keep his beacon lit so that passing ship could avoid the rocky shore one night a man who lived close by needed to borrow some of his precious commodity to light his home so the lighthouse keeper gave him some of his own so the lighthouse keeper gave him some of his own another night a traveler begged for some oil to light his lamp so he could keep on traveling the lighthouse keeper also compiled this request and gave him the amount he needed the next night the lighthouse keeper was awakened by the mother banging on the door she prayed for some oil so that she could illuminate her home and feed her family again he agreed soon all of his oil was gone and his beacon went out many ships are grand around and gave many lives were lost because the lighthouse keeper forget to focus on his priority he neglected his primary duty and paid a high price experiencing solitude for even a few minutes a day will keep you centered on your highest life priorities and help you avoid neglect that pervades the life of so many of us and saying that you don't have enough time to be silent on a regular basis is a lot like saying you are too busy to stop driving to stop for gas eventually it will catch up with you chapter 17 think about your ideal neighborhood one of the things i have done along my quest for self knowledge is to make a list of all the people i wish lived next to door of me these are men and women from both of past and present who i could love to be able to drop in on for a quick cup of tea every once in a while and share a laugh from time to time the very act of listening your listing your ideal neighbors will connect you to many of the values and traits you respect the most people in and in doing so you will help more about yourself as a person it is also one way to spend 30 minutes of your life here are some people on my list Norman Vincent Peale the famed author of the power of positive thinking Henry David Thoreau the great american philosopher and the author of Walden the most favorite book of mine Balthazar Gracian the Jesus scholar who became one of Spain's greatest writers Billy Holiday the great jazz singer Nelson Mandela the freedom fighter Og man di no self or help order of such classics a better way to live and university of success mother teresa the respected humanitarian richard branson the british tycoon and adventurer perry elliot trudeau the colorful canadian prime minister miles davis the legendary trumpeter muhammad ali the world champion boxer benjamin franklin the renowned statesman Take a moment right now to jot down some of the people whom you wished lived on your street and then think about the qualities that make these men and women so admirable that how you might foster your qualities in your life the first step to realizing your life vision is defining it and the first step to becoming the person you want to be is identifying the traits of the person you want to be chapter 18 get up early getting up early is a gift you give to yourself few disciplines have the power to transform your life as does the habit of early rising there is a very special ta- about first few hours of the morning time seems to slow down and a deep sense of peace fills in the air joining the 5 o'clock club will allow you to start controlling your day rather than letting your day control you winning the battle of the bed and putting mind over mattress by rising early will you will provide you with at least one quiet hour for yourself yourself during the most crucial part of your day the beginning if spent wisely the rest of the your day will unfold into a wonderful way 
in the monk who sold his ferrari i challenged readers to get up with the sun and offered a number of ideas to help them cultivate this new life discipline from many letters emails and faxes i have received from the people who have improved the quality of their lives getting up at 5 am i can safely say that this is one of the success principles that is really going to worth integrating into your life in doing so you will join the rank of many influential people in our time ranging from mahatma gandhi ma thomas edison nelson mandela to ted turner and mary k ash one of the reader of the monk a marketing executive wrote that her stress level fell so dramatically once she started raising early that her team at office presented her with a paperweight bearing the following inscription to our mip most improved player whatever you are doing keep doing it you are inspiration to us all a consummate late riser she vowed to stop sleeping in and spending her days making up for the time lost while under blanket so while her family and the world around her slept she began to get up first at 6 pm 6 am then at 5:30 am and finally 5 am during the free time that she found uh, she had created she would do all the things she loved to do but somehow she never found the time listening carefully to classical music writing letter reading the classics and walking were just some of her activities that she used to rekindle her spirit and reconnect with a part of herself she thought she had lost by getting up early began she began to take care self uh, care for herself again and by doing so she became a much better parent spouse and professional to cultivate the habit of getting up earlier the first thing is to remember that the quality rather than the quality of sleep quantity of sleep matters the most it is better to have 6 hours of uninterrupted sleep than 10 hours of restless broken sleep here are four tips to help you sleep more deeply don't rehearse the activity of your day while you are lying on the bed to get sleep don't eat after 8 pm if you had to eat something have soup don't watch the news before you go to sleep don't read in the bed give yourself a few weeks for this habit to take hold saying that you are tired to get up early but gave up after 7 days because it was just too hard like saying you tried to take in the french lessons for a week but gave up because you could not speak the language by then life changes takes time effort and patience but the results you will receive make the initial stress you experience more than worth it chapter 19 see your troubles as blessings during the life leadership seminars i give i often ask the participant this question who would agree with me that we learn the most from our most difficult experiences inevitably nearly every hand in the room goes up given this i wonder often why as human beings spend so much time of our lives focusing on the negative aspects of our most difficult experiences rather than seeing them for what they truly are our greatest teachers you would not have the wisdom and knowledge you know no possess were it not for the setbacks you have faced the mistakes you have made and the suffering you have endured once and for all come to realize that the pain and the te- is a teacher and failure is the highway to the success you cannot learn how to play guitar while hitting a few wrong notes and you will never learn how to sail if you are not willing to the tip of the bow over a few times begin to see your troubles as blessings and resolve to transform your stumbling blocks into stepping stones and vow to turn your wounds into wisdom like most people i have encountered my own share of pain as i have advanced along the path of life but i always try to remind myself that our character is shaped not through life's easiest experience but during life's toughest ones it is during life's most trying times that we discover who really we are and the fullness of the strength that lies within us if you are currently experiencing challenges of your own i respectfully offer the following words of rainer maria rilke which have helped my life greatly when life throws one of its curves my way have patience with everything that remains unsolved in your heart try to love the questions themselves like locked rooms and like books written in ten for a written in a foreign language don't do not now look for the answers 
they cannot now be given because you could not live them it is a question of experiencing everything at present you need to live the question perhaps you will gradually without even noticing it find yourself experiencing the answer at some distance day chapter 20 laugh more according to one study the average 4 year old laughs 300 times a day while the average adult laughs about 15 times a day with all the obligations and stresses and activities that fill our day we have forgotten how to laugh daily laughter have been shown to elevate our moods promote creativity and give us more energy comedian steve martin reportedly laughs for 5 minutes in front of the mirror every morning to get his creative juices flowing and to start his day on a high note try it it works laughter therapy has even been used to cure illness and heal those without serious ailments as william james the father of modern psychology observed we don't laugh because we are happy we are happy because we laugh a friend of mine always known for his wise ways made it his new year resolution one year to laugh more every few weeks he would go to local video store and rent a three stooges movie or buy a new book of humor which he would then dip into when he had few free moments during the course of his day a positive person already he began to notice that he felt even happier and personal started to laugh even more than before he undertook his personal development initiative because of all humor he surrounded himself and the new awareness it created in his life he also began to see the lighter side of the things and no longer experienced the level of the stress he had felt in his professional pursuits this simple discipline raised him to a whole new worlds of new level of living and the life effectiveness why not follow my friend's lead and head down to your local video store to stock up on the latest funny movies then pick up a few books perhaps something from gary larson's fireside series or the much read dilbert cartoons to stimulate your laughter habit reconnect to your play full side and enjoy the wonders of a deep belly laugh one chapter 21 spend a day without your watch last fall i did something i have not done for many years i left my watch at home and spent an entire day without looking at the time rather than living by the clock and planning everything i was going to do that day i was simply lived for the moment and did whatever i felt like doing i became a true human being rather than merely a human doing Early in the morning I went for a walk in deep woods one of my favorite things to do with me I carried an old paperback copy of Walden by the social philosopher Henry David Thoreau a book I have come to love after finding a beautiful place to sit and read I experienced one of those moments of synchronicity where something perfect happens at just at the right time For me it was randomly opening the book and finding the following paragraph in front of me I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die discover that I had not lived I did not wish to live what was not life living is so dear nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary I wanted to live deep and suck out of all marrow of life to live so sturdily and spartan like as to put to root all that was not life I reflected on this great man's words and soaked up the miraculous beauty of the scene around me the rest of the day was spent in a bookshop watching toy story with my kids relaxing with the family on our patio and listening to my favorite pieces of music nothing expensive nothing complicated but completely fun Chapter 22 Take more risks I'll make you this promise on your deathbed in the twilight of your life it will not be all the risk you took that you will regret the most rather what will fill your heart with the greatest amount of regret and sadness will be all those risks that you did not take all those opportunities that you did not seize and all those fear you did not face remember that on the other side of the fears lies freedom and stay focused on the timeless success principle that says life is nothing more than a game of numbers the more you the risks 
you take, the more rewards you will receive. Or in the word of Sophocles, fortune is on, not on the other side of faint-hearted. To live your life to the fullest, start taking more risk and doing the things you fear. Get good at being uncomfortable and stop walking the path of least resistance. Sure, there is a greater chance you will stub your toes when you walk a road less traveled, but that is only the way you can get anywhere. As my wise mother always says, you cannot get to the third base with one foot on one second. Or as Henry Gate observed, one does not discover new land without consenting to lose sight on the shore for a very long time. The real secret to a life abundance is to stop your spending or your days searching for security and to start spending your days pursuing opportunities. Sure, you will meet with your share of failures if you start living more deliberately and passionately, but failures is nothing more than learning how to win. Or as my dad observed one day, Robin, it's risky out on a limb, but that's where the all fruit is. As I wrote in earlier lesson, life is all about choices. Deeply fulfilled and highly actualized people simply make wiser choices than others. You can choose to spend the rest of your days sitting on the shore of life in complete safe safety or you can take some chances, dive deep into the water and discover the pearls that lie waiting for the person of true courage. To keep me inspired and centered on the fact that I must keep stretching my own personal boundaries as the days go by. I have posted the following words of Theodore Roosevelt in the study when I write, It is not the critic who counts, nor the man who points out how strong the man stumbled or where doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is mad with dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes short again and again, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions and spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end of the triumphs of hard achievement, who at the words worst he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Chapter 23 Live a Life On being asked about the ups and downs of his career, movie star Kevin Costner responded with these words, I am living a life. I found this reply to be profound. Rather than spending his days judging the events and experiences of his life as either good or bad, he adopted neutral stance and simply decided to accept them for what they are as a natural path of the path he is on. We all travel different roads to our ultimate destinations. For some of us, the path is rockier than for others. But no one reaches the end without facing some form of adversity. So rather than fight it, why not accept it as the way of life? Why not detach yourself from the outcomes and simply experience every circumstance that enters your life to the fullest? Feel the pain and savor the happiness. If you have in never visited the valleys, the view from the mountain is not as breathtaking. Remember, these are no failures in life, only results. There are no true tragedies, only lessons. And there are really no problems, only opportunities waiting to be recognized as solutions by the person of wisdom. Chapter 24 Learn from a Good Movie I love going to the movies whenever I can. Often I take my young daughter Bayakana and my son Colby with me and while munching on popcorn we enjoy the latest animated film that is heating up the box office. We always walk out with smiles on our face along with the whole host of new characters we can pretend to be in our daily play sessions. When I came on the road I went on the road for speaking tours, I still try to find a few hours at the end of the day to slip into the theater in whatever city I may be in and watch a good movie. I find that films not only relaxes me but they also serve to transport me to a different world and inspire me to keep thinking about the endless possibilities life holds. I guess movies bring out a drought the dreamer in me. Recently I saw an Italian movie called Life is Beautiful. Though it was subtitled, it kept me riveted for nearly three hours and moved me like no film I have seen in quite some time. Much of the story centers on a loving father and his relationship with his young son. Early on, the two are inseparable and share many great times. 
Suddenly, one uh, one afternoon, the two are taken away from their home and placed on a bound train from Auschwitz, the notorious Nazi concentration camp. The rest of the movie shows the incredible lens of the father go to not only keep his son alive but to actually keep him happy from the horrifying ordeal. Though the father uh, ultimately sacrifices his own life at the end, life is beautiful is a powerful reminder that living is a gift and we must make the best of it every day of our lives. A good movie can restore your perspective, can reconnect you to the things that you value the most and keep you enthusiastic about the other things in life. And as Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Chapter 25 Bless Your Money If you ever go to London, England, visit Foyle's, which is among the oldest bookstores in the city. I have found more gems by browsing along its dusty shelves than any other bookshops I have visited around the world. Being a dedicated a student of self-help literature myself generally gravitate to that section in the store. I always look for a little known work that will offer me a mo more few insights of the art of living and help me improve the quality of my own life. And in foilage, I always find one. A few years back, I found a book entitled with Bring Out the Magic in Your Mind. It was written almost 30 years ago by the man named al Quran who was then known as the finest mental magician in the world. In a chapter entitled The Secret of the Wealth, he writes the following words. When you send your money out, remember always to bless it and when it to bless everybody that it touches and command it to go out and feed the hungry and clothe the naked and command it to come back to you a million fold. Don't pass this over lightly. I am serious. Over the next few years, why not to follow Al Quran's advice and see what happens? When you pay for your groceries, silently bless all those who have helped this food to you, the farmers who have grown it, the delivery people who have carried it, and the stone clerks who have stocked it. If you are writing a check for your children's education, why not give a silent appreciation to all the teachers who are spending their days shaping the minds of your kids and to all the other people who make their work possible? When you pull out a few bills to buy that magazine off the rack in a convenience store, bless the person who is toiling away behind the counter and hope the money adds to the value of the quality of his or her life. As that timeless truth says, the hand that gives is the hand that gathers. Chapter 21 Spend a day without your watch. Last fall, I did something I have not done for many years. I left my watch at home and spent an entire day without looking at the time. Rather than living by the clock and planning everything I was going to do that day, I was simply lived for the moment and did whatever I felt like doing. I became a true human being rather than merely a human doing. Early in the morning, I went for a walk in deep woods, one of my favorite things to do. With me, I carried an old paperback copy of Walden by the social philosopher Henry David Thoreau, a book I have come to love. After finding a beautiful place to sit and read, I experienced one of those moments of synchronicity, where something perfect happens at just at the right time. For me, it was randomly opening the book and finding the following paragraph in front of me. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not. When I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live what was not life. Living is so dear, nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary. I wanted to live deep and suck out of all marrow of life, to live so sturdily and spartan-like as to put to root all that was not life. I reflected on this great man's words and soaked up the miraculous beauty of the scene around me. The rest of the day was spent in a bookshop, watching Toy Story with my kids, relaxing with the family on our patio and listening to my favorite pieces of music. Nothing expensive, nothing complicated, but completely fun. Chapter 22 Take More Risks I'll make you this promise on your deathbed. 
in the toilet of your life it will not be all the risk you took that you will regret the most rather what will fill your heart with the greatest amount of regret and sadness will be all those risk that you did not take all those opportunities that you did not seize and all those fear you did not face remember that on the other side of the fears lies freedom and stay focused on the timeless success principle that says life is nothing more than a game of numbers the more you the risks you take the more rewards you will receive or in the word of sophocles fortune is on not on the other side of faint hearted to live your life to the fullest start taking more risk and doing the things you fear get good at being uncomfortable and stop walking the path of least resistance sure there is a greater chance you will stub your toes when you walk a road less traveled but that is only the way you can get anywhere as my wise mother always says you cannot get to the third base with one foot on one second or as andrew gate observed one does not discover new land without consenting to lose sight on the shore for a very long time the real secret to a life abundance is to stop your spending or your days searching for security and to start spending your days pursuing opportunities sure you will meet with your share of failures if you start living more deliberately and passionately but failures is nothing more than learning how to win or as my dad observed one day robin it's lis- risky out on a limb but that's where the all fruit is as i wrote in earlier lesson life is all about choices deeply fulfilled and highly actualized people simply make wiser choices than others you can choose to spend the rest of your days sitting on the shore of life in complete safe safety or you can take some chances dive deep into the water and discover the pearls that lie waiting for the person of true courage to keep me inspired and centered on the fact that i must keep stretching my own personal boundaries as the days go by i have posted the following words of theodore roosevelt in the study when i write it is not the critic who counts not the man who points out how strong the man stumbled or where doer of deeds could have done better the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena whose face is marred with dust and sweat and blood who strives valiantly who errs and comes short again and again who knows the great enthusiasms the great devotions and spends himself in a worthy cause who at the best knows in the end of the triumphs of hard achievement who at the words worst he fails at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat chapter 23 live a life on being asked about the ups and downs of his career movie star Kevin Costner responded with these words I am living a life I have found this reply to be profound rather than spending his days judging the events and experiences of his life as either good or bad he adopted neutral stance and simply decided to accept them for what they are as a natural path of the path he is on we all travel different roads to our ultimate destinations for some of us the path is rockier than for others but no one reaches the end without facing some form of adversity so rather than fight it why not accept it as the way of life why not detach yourself from the outcomes and simply experience every circumstance that enters your life to the fullest feel the pain and savor the happiness if you have in- never visited the valleys the view from the mountain is not as breathtaking Remember these are no failures in life only results there are no true tragedies only lessons and there are really no problems only opportunities waiting to be recognized as solutions by the person of wisdom Chapter 24 learn from a good movie I love going to the movies whenever I can and often I take my young daughter Bayakana and my son Colby with me and while munching on popcorn we enjoy the latest animated film that is heating up the box office We always walk out with smiles on our face along with the whole host of new characters we can pretend to be in our daily play sessions. When I came on the road, I am on the road for speaking tours. I still try to find a few hours at the end of the day to slip into the theater in whatever city I may be in and watch a good movie. I find that films not only relaxes me but they also serve to transport me to a different world 
and inspire me to keep thinking about the endless possibilities life holds i guess movies bring out a drought the dreamer in me recently i saw an italian movie called life is beautiful though it was subtitled it kept me riveted for nearly 3 hours and moved me like no film i have seen in quite some time much of the story centers on a loving father and his relationship with his young son early on the two are inseparable and share many great times suddenly one uh, one afternoon the two are taking an away from their home and placed on a bound train from auschwitz the notorious nazi concentration camp the rest of the movie shows the incredible lengths of the father go to not only keep his son alive but to actually keep him happy from the horrifying ordeal though the father uh, ultimately sacrifices his own life at the end Life is beautiful is a powerful reminder that living is a gift and we must make the best of it every day of our lives a good movie can restore your perspective can reconnect you to the things that you value the most and keep you enthusiastic about the other things in life and as ralph waldo emerson said nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm chapter 25 bless your money if you ever go to london England visit Foley's which is among the oldest bookstores in the city i have found more gems by browsing along its dusty shelves than any other bookshops i have visited around the world being a dedicated a student of self help literature myself generally gravitate to that section in the store i always look for a little known work that will offer me a more more few insights of the art of living and help me improve the quality of my own life and in foilays i always find one a few years back i found a book entitled with bring out the magic in your mind it was written almost 30 years ago by the man named al quran who was then known as the finest mental magician in the world in a chapter entitled the secret of the wealth he writes the following words when you send your money out or remember always to bless it and when it to bless everybody that it touches and command it to go out and feed the hungry and clothe the naked and command it to come back to you a million fold don't pass this over lightly i am serious over the next few years why not to follow al quran's advice and see what happens when you pay for your groceries silently bless all those who have helped this food to you the farmers who have grown it the delivery people who have carried it and the stone clerks who have stocked it If you are writing a check for your children's education why not give a silent appreciation to all the teachers who are spending their days shaping the minds of your kids and to all the other people who make their work possible when you pull out a few bills to buy that magazine off the rack in a convenience store bless the person who is toiling away behind the counter and hope the money adds to the value of the quality of his or her life as that timeless truth says the hand that gives is the hand that gathers chapter 26 focus on the worthy a while ago a fedex package arrived at my office inside it was an envelope with a gold seal placed on the fold and my name was carefully written on the front i quickly opened it and began to read the letter within It was from the CEO of a major corporation who had picked up my book Leadership Wisdom from the Monk Who Sold His Ferrari at an airport while on his way to business meeting in Europe. He says that he was a lifelong student of leadership and was intrigued by the title which had brought a smile to his face. This executive had been under tremendous pressure as the result of overwhelming demands on him and was hoping to learn some ways to improve his leadership effectiveness so that he could spend more time on the things that really mattered both in his business life and his personal world in his letter he wrote i as i read the story about this man whose life had become too complex and out of control i began to connect with a part of myself that i had not connected with for many many years i began to think about the people in my organization who look to me for guidance and inspiration I began to think about my wife who has been begging me to take a vacation for the past 5 years and I thought about my three children who had watched their father spend the finest years of youth climbing the imaginary ladder of success 
I consider myself a strong person but as I continued to read your book I began to sob quietly at first and then uncontrollably so much that that flight attendant rushed over and politely asked everything was right that CEO continued that moment was a wake up call for me an experience I will carry with me until the day I die I knew that I had to make some serious changes in the way I was leading in the way that I was living so on that flight sitting 335000 feet above the world below i promised myself i would commit myself to eliminating the multitude of the distractions in my life and concentrate on only the fundamentals those few activities that really had the power to make a difference in the way i worked and lived and i promised to ro- stop reading six newspapers a day handling every piece of mail that appeared in my basket and accepting every dinner invitation that came my way I even had the title of your chapter on personal effectiveness which you aptly called focus on worthy made into a plaque that I keep on my desk to remind me that the person who tries to do everything ultimately achieves nothing I cannot tell you how much my life had become better since I began to live by this simple philosophy thank you time is your most precious commodity and yet most of us live our life as if we have all the time in the world The real secret to getting control of your life is to restore a sense of focus in your days. The real secret to getting things done is knowing what things need to be undone. Once you start spending hours of your day only on those high leverage activities and priorities that will advance your life's mansion and legacy, everything will change. Many of history's greatest thinkers have arrived at the same conclusion. the sage confucius applied on this way the person who chases two rabbits catches neither while the roman philosopher marcus aurelius said let thine occupations be few if thou wouldst lead a tranquil life management guru peter drucker made the point of wisdom in yet another way when he wrote there is nothing so useless as doing efficiently which should be not done at all chapter 27 write a thank you note the easiest thing the things that are easy to do are also the things that are not easy to do the more the pace of our lives is speed up the greater the impact of the simple gestures of li- life will have on those most deserving of them and near the very top of my list of simple gestures that have profounded consequences is the lost art of writing thank you notes everyone loves getting mail it's fact of human nature We all have a deep seated need to feel important. I truly love receiving letters from the people who have read my books and used lessons within them to make positive changes in their lives. Few things excite me and much as receiving a bag full of mail from men and women who have attended one of my seminars and seen their careers take off their personal lives improving. And knowing how much joy I feel when I receive from mail others I try my best to respond every letter that comes across my desk with a thank you note of my own. Even in the case of people I deal with only a daily basis, executives calling to book me for a speaking engagement, people who attend my personal coaching programs, members of the media requesting an interview and business people calling with new opportunities. I try to follow up every encounter with a sincerely written thank you note. Sure, it takes time. Sure, there might be pressing things on my agenda, but few acts have the power to build and cement relationship like heartfelt letter of thanks. It shows you care and that you are considerate and human. So this week, go out buy a package of the blank thank you cards that are now available in bulk at your local office, supply, warehouse, and start writing. You and all the people that you deal with will be glad you did. Chapter 28 Always carry a book with you. According to US News and World Report, over the course of your lifetime, you will spend 8 months opening the junk mail, 2 years unsuccessfully returning the phone calls and 5 years standing in line. Given this a startling fact, one of the simplest yet smartest time management strategies you can follow is to never go anywhere without a book under your arm. While others waiting in line are complaining, you will be growing and feeding your mind a rich diet of ideas found in great books. So as long as you live, keep learning how to live. Noted the Roman philosopher Seneca.
Yet most people never read more than a handful books after they complete their formal education. In these times of rapid change, ideas are commodity of success. All it takes is one idea, idea from the right book to reshape your character or to transform your relationship or to revolutionize your life. A good book can change the way you live as a philosopher, Henry David Thoreau observed in Walden. There are probably words addressed to our condition exactly, which if we could really hear and understand would be more salutary than the morning or the spring of our lives, and possibly put a new aspect on facing the things for us. How many man has dated a new era of his life from the reading of a book? The book exists for us, perhaps, which will explain our miracles and reveal new ones. How high you will rise in your life when you will be determined not by how hard you work, but by how well you think. As I say in my leadership speeches, the greatest leader in this economy will be the greatest thinkers, and the person you will be five years from now will come down uh, will come down to two primary influences the people you associate with and the books you read i often joke with my seminar audience that i play cinderella tennis i try hard but i never quite to make it to the ball yet i when i play tennis with someone better than i am something almost magic happens to my game i make shots that i have never made before gracefully fo floating through the air with the tees that would make then even the best player blush. Reading good books create much same phenomenon. When you expose your mind to the thoughts of the greatest people who have walked this planet before you, your game improves and the depth of your thinking expands and you rise to a whole new level of wisdom. Despite read, deep reading allows you to connect with the world's most creative, intelligent and inspiring people 24 hours a day, Aristotle, Emerson, Seneca, Gandhi, Theoreau, Dorotha Brandy, and many of the wisest women and the men who have graced our planet today are just waiting to share their knowledge with you through their books. Why wouldn't you seize such an opportunity as often as you could? If you have not read today, you have not really lived today. And knowing how to read but failing to do so puts you exactly same in position, a person who can't read but wants to chapter 29 create a love account mother teresa once said there are no great acts there are only small acts done with great love what small acts can you do to today to deepen the bonds between you and the people you value the most what random acts of kindness and senselessness senseless acts of beauty can you offer to someone in an effort to make his or her day just a little better the irony of being more compassionate is that the very act of giving others makes you feel better as well. To practice being more loving, create a love account. Each day make a few deposits in this very special reserve by doing something as small to add joy to the life of someone around you. Buying your partner's fresh cut flowers for no reason at all, sending your best friends a copy of favorite book or talking the time to tell uh, taking the time to tell your children in uncertain terms how you feel them are all good places to start. If there is one thing that I have learned in life, it is that the little things are the big things. Those tiny daily deposits into the love account will give you far more happiness than any amount of money in your bank could account do. As Emerson said so eloquently, without the rich heart, wealth is an ugly beggar. Or as Tolstoy wrote, the means to gain happiness is to throw out all for oneself like spider in all direction and adhesive way of, of love and to catch all that comes. Chapter 30 Get Behind People's Eyeballs One of the deepest of all human young hungers is the need to be understood, cherished and honored. Yet in the fast-paced days we live in, too many people believe that listening involves nothing more than waiting for other person to stop talking. And to make matter worse, while the person is speaking, we are all often to using that time to formulate our own response rather than sympathizing the point being made. Taking the, taking the time to truly understand another's point of view that shows that you value what he says to and care about him as a person. 
when you start getting behind the eyeballs one of the person who is speaking and try to see the world from his perspective you will connect with him deeply and build high trust relationship that last we have two ears and one mouth for a reason to listen twice as what we speak and having the code say to be a better listener has an advantage since you are not doing all the talking you are or doing all the learning gaining access to information you would have missed had missed you been engaged in usual monologue here are the few practical tips to become better at the art of listening if you are speaking and the person you are having a conversation with has not said something within past 60 seconds there is a good chance that you have lost her and it's time to stop talking so much resist the temptation to interrupt catch yourself just before you do so and pay more attention to the content of what the other person is saying to you if appropriate in in a business setting take notes few things more readily show the other person in a conversation that you genuinely wish to learn from what she has to say and pulling out a notepad and making notes while speaks after the other person makes a point so rather than immediately responding with your opinion reflect what you have just heard saying some things that just to make sure understand you are you saying this and doing with so complete sincerity you will bring you much closer to the life of the people you interact with every day of life 31 list your problems a problem well stated as is the problem half solved stated by charles kettering there is something very special that happens you when you take up a piece of paper and list every single one of your problems on it it is very much like the peaceful feeling that you are getting after telling your best friend about something that has been troubling you for few weeks a weight somehow falls on you from your shoulder you feel lighter calmer and freer i have discovered that while our minds can be our best friend they also can be worst enemies If you keep thinking about your problems pretty soon you will find that you are are about little else the mind is a strange creature in this regard and the things you wanted to remember it forgets but all those things you wanted to forget it remembers i have people coming to my seminar who tells me that they are still mad about what someone did to them 15 years ago or still annoyed at what rude sales clerk said them to last month to let go of the mental clutter that your problems I intend to generate list all your worries on a piece of paper if you do so they will no longer be able to fester in your mind and drain your valuable energy this simple exercise will also permit you to take your problems into the perspective and tackle them in an orderly orderly well planned sequence among the many successful people who have used this wisdom techniques are martial art master bruce lee and winston churchill who once said It helps me to write down a half dozen things which are worrying to me. Two of them say disappear. About two, nothing can be done, and it's no use of worrying. Two, perhaps, can be settled. Chapter thirty-two. Practice the action habit. Wisdom is knowing what to do next. Skill is knowing how to do it, and virtue is doing it. Observed David Starr Jordan. Most of us know what we need to do in order to live happier, healthier, and more fulfilling lives. The real problem is that we don't know we don't do what we know and I have heard many motivational speakers say knowledge is power I disagree knowledge is not power knowledge is only potential power it transforms itself into actual power the moment you decisively act on it the mark of a strong character lies not in doing what is fun to do what is easy to do the sign of deep moral authority appears in the individual who consistently does what he ought to be doing rather than what he feels like doing a person of true character spend his days doing that which is the right thing to do rather than watching television for 3 hours after an exhausting day at work he has the courage to get up off the couch and read to his kids instead of sleeping in those cold wintry mornings this individual exercises his natural reserves of self discipline and gets out of a bed for a run and since the action is a habit the more positive actions you take the more you will feel like taking you uh, feel like taking all too often we spend our days waiting for the ideal path to appear in front of us we forget that the path are just made by walking not waiting dreaming is great but thinking big thoughts alone will not build a business pay your bills or make you the person you know in your heart can be
In the words of Thomas Carrelly, the end of the man is an action and not a thought, and thought it were the noblest. The smallest of action is always the better than the boldest of intentions. Chapter 33 See Your Children as Gifts On Father's Day, my son Colby brought home a handmade card from school. On the front it was a small handprint inside the card above a little photograph of my child were these words. Sometimes you get discouraged because I am so small and I always leave my fingerprints or furniture and walls. But every day I am growing. I am sure I will be grown up someday and all those tiny fingerprints will surely fade away. So here's a final handprint just as you can recall exactly how my fingers looked when I was a very small callway. Children grow very quickly. It seems like just yesterday that I stood in the delivery room waiting for the birth of my son and two years later for the birth of my daughter Bikana. It is easy to promise yourself will spawn, spend more time with kids when the things slow down at work or when I get that big promotion or the next year I will get a more time. But if you don't act on life, life has a habit on acting you. The weeks slips into months and the months slip into a year before you know it. That little child is now adult with a family of her own. The greatest gift you can give to your children is the gift of your time. And one of the greatest gifts you will ever give yourself is that of enjoying the kids and seeing them what they are truly are the small miracles of life. In the prophet, Cahal Gibran makes the point far more eloquently than I ever could that he said, Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. Chapter 34 Enjoy the Path in my work, I am often asked to teach people how to set and achieve goals. When I ask my audience why it is so important that you realize your goals, they often answer because getting the things I want will make me happy. While there is an element of truth in this answer, getting the things we want often does brings a measure of joy into our lives. It somehow misses the mark. The real value of setting and achieving goals lies not in the rewards you receive but in the person you become as a result of reaching your goals. This simple distinction has helped me to enjoy the path of life while at the same time staying focused on the meeting my personal and professional objectives. As one of my favorite philosophers, Ralph Waldo and Morrison observed, the reward for a thing well done is to have done it. When you achieve a goal, whether that goal was to be a wiser leader or to become a better parent, you will have grown as a person in the process. Often, you will not be able to detect this growth, but the growth will have occurred. So rather than saving only the reward that flowed the achievement of your goal, celebrate the fact that the process of reaching your destination has improved the person you are. You have built self-discipline, discovered new things about your abilities, and manifested more of the human potentials. These are the reward in and of themselves. Chapter 35 Remember that awareness precedes changes. You will never be able to eliminate a weakness you, you don't even know about. The first step is to eliminating a negative habit to become aware of it. Once you develop an awareness about the behavior you are trying to change, you will be well on your path of replacing it with one that has been more helpful. As an author, I am frequently invited to appear on the radio and television talk shows. When I first started doing these programs, I thought I was natural. I enjoyed being the host, meeting the host, sharing my insights and discussing the ideas in my book with the callers. It was only when I began to tape myself and study those tapes that I realized I had something been aware of it. I spoke far too quickly. As a matter of the fact, I sometimes spoke too fast that many of the key points I was trying to make got lost in the avalanche of words I heaped on the audience that had turned in. Becoming aware of my weakness was the first step of eliminating it. Then I went to my favorite bookstores and bought 5 books on effective communication. In addition, I ordered a series of audio cassettes that contains speeches of some world's top speakers. I also joined National Speakers Association. Finally, I picked up the phone and called a number of media personalities whom I felt I could learn and from and invited them for a quick lunch. 
not one of them refused over a matter of few weeks i educated myself how to improve my delivery on tv and radio so that i could share my message more effectively i have found as well that becoming aware of a weakness that is paying attention to it also attracts more solution into one's life for example as soon as i realized that i needed to slow down communicate in a better way i started to notice seminar on the subject advertised in paper i also noticed that right books appeared on the right shelves of the bookstore where i was browsing and found people who could coach me so over the coming few weeks reflect on your weakness and vow them to transform them into strengths that will add richness and energy to the way you live Next, chapter 36 read tuesdays with mori when i was on the denver stop of the american book tour for the monk who sold his ferrari i dropped into the airport bookstore before boarding the flight home as i looked through the latest best sellers i bought a small book with a simple cover caught my attention its title read tuesdays with mori an old man a young man and the life's greatest lesson this was the old book that at least dozen bookseller on the tour had suggested i buy since it was and it was many ways similar to the one i had just written and so i picked it up after take off i thought i would browse through the book for a few minutes before taking a much needed nap a few minutes slipped into a few hours and by the time we landed i just finished the last page with tears in my eyes the book is about bill a man who after leaving university building a career rediscovers that his favorite professors Mori is in the final month of old man's life. Every Tuesday the former student then visits the dying teacher to learn another lesson about life from the man, from this man who has lived so richly and completely. A real account on the lessons Mori offers during these moving Tuesday sessions include how to avoid a regret of life, the value of life, the importance of forgiveness and remarking on meaning of death. where he makes the powerful remark once you learn how to die you learn how to live this beautiful little book will remind you of the importance of counting your blessings daily and having the wisdom to honor life's simplest pleasures no matter how busy your life becomes one of the greatest legacies i have leave to my true children will be a library of books that inspire and touch me and tuesday and mori tuesdays with mori will be one that will sit out in front Chapter 37 Master your time I have always found it ironic that so many people say they would do anything for a little more time every day and yet they squander the time they already have Time is a greatest life greatest leveler we all have the same alternment of 24 hours a day what separates the people who create great lives from also runs in how they use these hours Most of us live as we if we have infinite time of time and to do all the things we know we must to do to live a full and rewarding life. And so we have to procrastinate and put these achievement on far dreams on hold while we tend to those daily emergencies that fill up our days. This is a certain recipe of daily regret life. As novelist Paul Bowles wrote once wrote because we don't know when we will die we get to think of life is an inexhaustible well yet everything happens only a certain number of times and a very small number really how many more times you will remember a certain afternoon of your child some afternoon sat so deeply a part of your life that can you even conceive your life without it perhaps four or five times more perhaps not even that how many more times will you catch the full moon rise perhaps 20 and yet it also seems limitless commit yourself to managing your time more effectively develop a keen sense of awareness about how important your time really is don't let people waste this most precious of your commodities and invest in in only those activities that truly count chapter 38 keep your cool anyone can become ang- angry but that's easy but to be angry with the right person to the right degree to the right time and for the right purpose and also in the right way is not that easy taught aristotle with all the stress and pressure in our life it is easily to lose our cool 
at the slight irritation at the slightest irritation while we are rushing home from the work at the end of another exhausting day we scream at the slow driver in front of us who apparently has all the time in the world while we shop at a grocery store we get annoyed with the store stock clerk clerk who sends us to the wrong aisle when we are searching of ingredients for tonight's las lasagna and while we are eating our dinner we yell at the telemarketer who has the nerve to interrupt us in an attempt to sell us their latest wares the problem with losing your temper or temper on a daily basis is that becomes a habit and like most habits a time arises when it becomes second nature person's relationships are unraveling business partnership begins to fall apart and your credibility decreases as you know you are a loose cannon effective people are consistent at end in many ways predictable tough times call for a cool people and they are always cool and calm when the pressure is on keeping your cool in a moment of crisis can save you years of pain and anguish hurtful words really unleashed in a single minute of anger have led to many broken friendship word like arrows once released they are impossible to retrieve so choose your with choose yours with care an excellent way to control your temper is simply to count 100 before you respond to someone who has irritated you another strategy to use is what i call the three gate test the ancient sages would only speak all the words they were used about to utter past the three gates at the first gate they asked themselves are these words truthful if so the words could then pass on to the second gate as the second gate the sages asked are these words so necessary if so then they would pass it on the third uh, third gate when they would ask are these words kind if so then only would they leave their lips and be sent to the world treat people as if they were what they ought to be and help them become what then they are capable of being said the german poet john johann wolfgang von goethe these are wise words to live by chapter 39 recruit a board of directors to succeed in these times of breakneck change campaign companies will often recruit a board of directors to help them make more effective decisions and lead them in the right direction during stormy times by consulting men and women of wisdom these organization reduce the number of mistakes they make boost corporate effectiveness and increase their credibility in the marketplace one client of mine has a different approach to the concept of having board of directors a seasoned entrepreneur and a participant in one of the monthly life coaching programs i conduct across the country this woman had told me that during her periods of silent contemplation she sits in a room with a pen and a pad of paper and write downs a problem that she is facing sometimes it involves a difficulty in relationship sometimes it concerns a money issue or at other times a struggle that is more spiritual in nature once in a state of deep relaxation she then calls upon her personal board of director to help her solve problems the twist the member of a boards are no longer alive in her imagination she seeks the wise counsel of man's many greatest history thinkers when confronting that problem requires a creative solution she asks leonardo da vinci how might you deal with this on facing a challenge that requires to have more courage she asks an aviation pioneer amelia earhart what would you do in this situation and when the issue involves money she asks the late billionaire sam walton widely known for his common sense sam how would you handle this the te- this techniques has truly evolved wonderful for her improved her creative thinking ability and kept her peaceful during turbulent times who would you have invite to sit on your imaginary board of director here are some people who i'd love to have on my council benjamin ben franklin for guidance on in shoes involving character albert skewitzer to remind me one of the important service to other mahatma gandhi and nelson mandela for leadership issues bruce lee for advice on self discipline mary mary curie for the question relating to innovation victor frankl the most holocaust survivor 
for the guidance about to how to deal with adversity. Chapter 40 Cure Your Monkey Mind To get the best from the life, you must be completely present and mindful in every minute of every hour of your day. As Albert Kalmus wrote, Real generosity towards the future consists in giving to all what is present, yet on most of our days, our minds are in 10 different places at any one time. Rather than enjoying the walk to work, we wonder what the boss will say to us when we get into the office or what will we have on the lunch or how children will do at school today. Our minds are just like scampering puppies, as they say in the East, like unchained monkeys rushing from place to place without any pause for peace. By developing present moments, awareness and abundance of the mental focus, you will not only feel much calmer in your life, you will also unlock the fullness of your mind's potential. When too many distractions compete for your attention, the power of mind is dissipated in all those different directions rather than concentrated on one point like the rays of a laser beam. The good news is that you can practice becoming more attentive to the present and developing skill within a relatively short period of time. One of the best ways to cure your monkey mind is through a technique I call focus reading. Every time your mind wanders from the page into a daydream or a worry, make a check mark in the right hand margin of the page. This simple act will increase your awareness of how poorly you concentrate and since awareness is the first step to change, help you build the skills you need for a clearer, quieter mind. Chapter 41 Get Good at Asking He who asks may be a fool for 5 minutes, he who doesn't is a fool for a lifetime goes the wise Chinese proverb. It makes me think of an ad I read in the classy, feel, classy feeds in recently that said to the beautiful woman in the brown suit coat at the drugstore at the street location provided on Saturday, November 28 at 4 p.m. You would bumped into me in front of the magazine section. I would love to meet and chat. The man who placed this ad then left his phone number. Destiny had given them an opportunity possibly to meet a woman of his dreams he had squandered and now after regretting the facts did he did not ask, he had to resort to replacing an ad in the newspaper in the desperate hope of finding this woman. The more you ask, the more you get but it takes practice to get good at it. Success is a numbers game. As the Buddhist says observed, every arrow that hits the bullseye is a result of 100 misses. Over the coming weeks, flex your asking muscles by asking for a better table at your favorite restaurant, for a free second scoop of your local ice cream shop or for a complimentary upgrade on your next airline flight. You might be surprised at the abundance that will flow in your life when you just ask about sincerely for the things you want. Remember, the person who asks what he wants at least has chance of getting what he wants. The person who does not ask, I have no chances. One of the best book I have read on the power of asking is The Aladdin Factor, written by my friend and speaking colleague Mark Victor Hansen along with self-esteem expert Jack Canfield. Full of practical ideas and simple techniques, the book also contains a wealth of inspiring quotes like one of from Somerset Maugham, It is a funny thing about life, if you refuse to accept anything but the best, you very get off in it. Chapter 42 Look for the Higher Meaning of Your Work One of my favorite magazines is The Fast Company. It provides a refreshing human look at the new world of the work. In a recent issue, Xerox PARC guru John Seeley Brown said something that really made me think. The job of leadership today is not just to make money, it's to make meaning. In the old days, most of us had content to have a job. <coughs> But now we crave so much more in our work. We want fulfillment, creative challenge, growth, joy and a sense that we are living for something more than ourselves. In a word, we seek meaning. One of the best ways to find the higher meaning in the work you do is to use the technique of a creative question, questioning to become aware of the impact of your work has on the world around you. Ask yourself our questions like who ultimately benefits from the products surfaces of my company offers or what differences do daily efforts make? 
Once you do so, you will start noticing the connection between your work and you do as your lives you touch. For example, if you are a teacher, stop focusing all the tremendous changes in your profession. Remember that every day you enter the classroom, you have the privilege to shape a young mind. There are children and families that count on you. If you are a financial advisor, remain centered on the fact that your services help people retire early, build the homes they have always wanted and fulfill their dreams. If you are an insurance professional, remember you help that you help people bring security to their lives and serve on times in the need. And if you are a retail clerk, think about how your work serves people and how the products you offer them add joy to their lives. By concentrating on the value of your work as the contribution you make, you will see the quantum improvements in your satisfaction and motivational levels. Few things energize the human spirit more than desire to make difference in the life of others. Mahatma Gandhi knew this, Nelson Mandela knew this, and even Mother Teresa knew this. The simple shift of the mind I'm encountering, I'm encouraging you to make can bring a whole new sense of enjoy and management into your life. Chapter 43 Build a Library of Heroic Books Few things make me happier than meeting someone who had read my books or listening to my audio tapes and hearing something like, I was so moved and inspired after going through your material that I went out and bought 10 more life improvement books and read them all. And you know what, they have completely transformed me. I not only write books on light readership, I am a dedicated student of them. As I mentioned in an earlier lesson, I spent countless hours in large bookstores combing the shelves for the latest treasure that will enlighten and educate me. I am also frequent used bookshops where I have picked some of my most valuable books for only a few dollars. As I write this in paragraph, I have a pre-owned copy of Maxwell's Mald's classic Psycho cybernetics on my desk which still bears the sticker price of $2.95. Also on my desk is a copy of Seneca's letter from a stoic, a truly priceless work which was purchased from by my dad for $1.95. While almost any reading will improve your mind in a world where there is too much to do, you must be selective in the book you read and so I suggest you to spend much of your time reading what theory you call the heroic books, those books that contain the noblest recorded thoughts of the man. Let your mind drink deeply the words from the greatest philosophers such as Epictetus and Confucius. Study about the poems of the wise poets such as Alfred Lord Tennyson, Emily Dickinson and John Keats and the novels of Leo Tolstoy, Herman Hees and the Bronze. Read the writing of Mahatma Gandhi, Albert Einstein and Mother Teresa. Connecting with such work for even a few minutes a day will keep you centered on what life is really about and will ultimately profoundly affect your character. Asked in an interview what is his biggest regret in his life, talk show superstar Larry King replied, I should have been better rooted in the great books. Here are some of the heroic books that helped me change my own life and gave me the wisdom an inspiration to live more deliberately and completely. If you read all of them and act on the lessons contained, you cannot help but improve your circumstances profoundly. Letters from a Stoic, Seneca, The Message of a Master, John MacDonald, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, The Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin, University of Success, Og Mandino, The Magic of Believing, Claude Bristol, Siddharth, Herman Hees. Psycho Cybernetics, Maxwell Marlds, The Power of the Subconscious Mind, Joseph Murphy, As a Man Thinketh, James Allen, Flo, Mihaly, Sigetsen Mihaly, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, Life is Tremendous, Charlie Tremendous, Joan. Through the words of technology, you can view a fuller listing of my favorite books at our website located at www.robinshima.com. Chapter 44 Develop Your Talents Norman Cousins once noted that the tragedy of the life is not death, but what we let die inside of us while we live.
In a similar vein, Ashley Montagu wrote that the deepest personal defeat suffered by human beings is the constituted by the difference between what one was capable of becoming and what one has in fact became. There is a difference between simply existing and truly living. There is a distinction between simply surviving and really thriving. The sad thing is that most people have lost sight of human gifts that lie within them and have resigned themselves to spending the best years of their lives watching television in a subdivision. In my speeches, I often use the following story drawn from the ancient ancient Indian mythology to remind the audience that there is an abundance of potential and an ability just waiting to be awakened within us if we only allow it to see the light of the day. Thousands of years ago, it was believed that everyone who walked on earth was God. But humankind abused its limited, limitless powers, so the supreme God decided to hide the Godhead, the source of all this potential, so that no one could find it. The question has become then when could su- where could such thing hidden? The first advisor suggested it could be placed deep inside the ground, in which supreme God replied, no, eventually someone will dig up enough and find it. The second advisor them offered, what if we place the Godhead at the bottom or the deepest in the ocean, to which the Supreme God responded, no, eventually someone will dive deep enough and find it. The third advisor chimed in, well, well, why don't we put it on the top of the highest mountain, which prompted the Supreme God to reply, no, I am certain that eventually someone will scale the highest peaks and find it. After reflection for some time, the God found the solution. I will put this source of all human power, potential and purpose inside the heart of the every man, woman and child on the planet, for which they will never think to look there. In all my work and with employees of organization across the North America, I see them the same thing. Too many people spend more time focusing on their weakness than developing their strengths. By concentrating on what they don't have, they neglect the talents they do have. The greatest people who have gone uh, before us all had a simple strategy that ensured their success. They knew themselves. They made the time to reflect on their core abilities, those special qualities that made them unique and spent the rest of their lives refining and expanding them. You see, we are all endowed with the capacity for genius. Perhaps you have just not taken the time to discover what your personal gifts are and then honed themselves them to the level where you are considered brilliant. Are you not using the best within you to its fullest capacity? If not, you are not only doing yourself a disservice, you are doing the world and all those within it who could benefit from your unique talents a disservice. Ruskin put in it this way, the weakest among us has a gift, however seemingly trivial, which is peculiar to him and which worthily used will be gift also to his race. Chapter 45 Connect with Nature We live in an age of seemingly limitless information. The weekday edition of New York Times contains more information than average person was exposed to during an entire lifetime in 17th century England. Over the years, I have found that spending time alone in natural surroundings connects me to larger universe around me and restores my spirit in this hurried age. After a busy week of speaking engagements, book signings and media appearance, the simple act of sitting in a wooded park and listening to the wind move through the leaves fill me with sense of quiet and peace. My priorities become clearer. My obligations seem less pressing and my mind grows still. Commuting with the nature is also an excellent way to unlock your creativity and generate new ideas. Newton formulated the law of gravity while relaxing under an apple tree. Likewise, Swiss designer George de Mestrel developed Velcro after examining the bird, bird dog birds that clung to his dog while he hiked in the mountain. Natural surroundings serve to stifle the endless chatter that fills our mind so that our true brilliance can be liberated. And while you spend the time enjoying nature, observe your surroundings with deep concentration. Study the complexity of a flower, the way the current moves in the sparkling stream. Take off your shoes and feel the grass under your feet. 
Give silent thanks to that you have privilege of enjoying these special gifts of nature. Many people don't. As Mahatma Gandhi observed, when I admire the wonder of a sunset or the beauty of the moon, my soul expands in the worship of the Creator. Chapter 46 Use Your Commute Time If you commute to the office for 30 minutes each every day, one after, after one year, you will have spent the equivalent of six weeks of eight hours a day in your car. Given this, you, can you really afford to spend all your time starting staring out the window and daydreaming while the negative news blares from the car radio? So many of highly successful and enlightened people I know share a common habit. They listen to audio cassettes in their cars. In doing so, they transform their driving time into learning time and make their automobiles moving universities turning your car into college on wheels will be one of the best investments you will ever make rather than arriving at work tired frustrated and dispirited dispirited listening to educational audio cassettes will make you commute fun fun and keep you inspired focused and alert to the endless opportunities around you the best way to spot someone truly committed to life improvement is to ask him whether his car radio is working. The real students of effective living will have no clue because they spend every minute of their driving time listening to audio tapes. I cannot tell you how many times I have gone to get into the passenger seat of the car of a successful and fulfilled person and found a small mountain of tapes occupying the place where I was to sit. Most of the latest book can be now found on audio cassette along with many of the best motivational programs and life leadership system. Personally, I try to listen to at least 5 new tapes a month ranging from the latest business bestsellers to program on time management, creativity, positive thinking, physical well-being and spiritual satisfaction. Chapter 47 Go on a news fast Negative news sells. In our society, more people will choose to watch the criminal trial of a celebrity rather than biography of a truly great human being. A newspaper with headline revealing the latest strategy will spend more copy than one announcing the latest scientific breakthrough. The real problem is that it is easy to get addicted to reading and watching negative news. I know so many people who begin their days by reading less than uplifting newspaper stories who end them by catching up on the latest crimes, accidents and scandals on the late night news. I am not against newspaper or television by any stretch of imagination. As a matter of fact, I find excellent information in many newspapers and have learned much from the intelligent TV programs. I have watched over the years. My point is simply this. Become more selective in the news you explore your mind to be. Be more deliberate in the way you read your newspaper and in the way you watch your television. Before you start reading the morning paper, have a purpose in a mind. Use it as an information tool to serve you and to make you wiser than as, as excuse, excuse to help you pass time. One of the best ways to me wean yourself from the news addiction that so many of us suffer from this and go on a 7 day news fast. Vow not to read even one negative news on story in the newspaper or watch even one negative news report in the television for next week. You will notice two things. First, you will really miss out on much information. You will still hear about most important stories of the days that circulates around your office and through encounter at home. Second, you will feel much more peaceful and serene. As well, you will find that the 7-day news fast offers yet another benefit. More time to do the things that will truly improve the quality of your life. Chapter 48 Get Serious About Setting Goals Many speakers and authors encourage you to set goals but most have never explained why this is such powerful discipline beyond saying something like something magical happens when you write down your goals on the paper. In my opinion, setting clearly defined goals for all the era areas of your life work for three reasons. First, it restores a sense of focus in your mind, a world that has become complicated by too many options. In this age we live in, there are simply too many things to do at any given time. There are too many distractions that compete our attention. 
goals clarify our desires and in doing so help us focus on only those activities that will lead us to what we want setting clearly defined goals will provide you with framework for smarter choices if you know precisely where you are going it becomes far easier to select those activities that you will get there writing down the goals and clarifies your attentions and the first step to realizing your vision is defining it as novelist sal bello once observed a clear plan relieves you for the torment of the choice or as author glenn bland wrote goals and plans take the worry out of living if you set the goals and the action you take will be based on your life's mission rather than on your day to day moods the second reason the goal setting works is that it keeps you alert to the opportunities the discipline almost magnetizes your mind to seek out new opportunities opportunities that you need to seize in order to create personal professional and spiritual life you desire and the third reason goal setting works is that clearly defined goals commit you to a course of action they give you the inspiration to act on your priorities and make the things happen in your life rather than waiting for the opportunities to land in your lap which rarely happens selecting goals that engage and motivate you is one of the best ways to boost the level of personal commitment to life and increase the energy you bring to your days so set big goals you are as only as rich whether materially or spiritually as your dreams or advertising genius david ogilvy put it don't bunt aim out the ball park aim for the company of immortals chapter 49 remember the rule of 21 as i wrote in the monk who sold his ferrari it takes about 21 days to develop a new habit yet most people create give up on creating a positive life change after only first few days when they experience the stress and pain that is always associated with replacing old behaviors with new ones new habits are much like a new pair of shoes for the first few days they will feel uncomfortable but if we break them in for 3 days they will fit like a second skin as human beings we are genetically programmed to resist change and maintain a state of equilibrium the condition known as homeostasis evolved naturally over time as it means a which our ancestor could survive constantly changing conditions the problem is that mechanism works to keep things as they are even when more favorable possibilities exist and that is why we have such difficulty adopting new habits and overcoming the gravitational forces that prevent us from moving from the higher level of living but just as rocket uses more fuel during the first few minutes after lift off than it does over the days when it follows when it will come more than half a million miles once you get those first day 21 days you will find that staying on course with a new habit will be far easier than you imagined take the time to study your personal habits and promise to uh, to make necessary changes the quality of your life will be determined in large measure by nature of your habits john dryden observed we first make our habits and then our habits make us while virginia woolf wrote the skeleton of habit alone upholds the human frame so ensure that your habits move you forward rather than holding you back in the timeless words of publius cicero powerful indeed is the empire of the habit chapter 50 practice forgiveness forgiving someone who has wronged you is actually selfish act rather than selfless one letting go of the hostility than hatred that you have allowed you to bottle up inside you is actually something you do for yourself rather than for the benefit of other person as i teach in my life coaching programs when you bear a grudge against someone it is almost as if you carry that person around your back with you he drains out of your energy enthusiasm and peace of mind but the moment you forgive him you get him off of your back and you can move with the rest of the life mark twain wrote that forgiveness is the fragrance that violet sheds on the heel that crushed it forgiveness is the act of spirit and personal courage it is also one of the best highways to elevate the quality of your life 
I have discovered that every minute you devote of thinking someone who has wronged you is a minute you have stolen from much worthier pursuit attracting those people who will help you. Chapter 51 Drink Fresh Fruit Juice The foods you consume affect your moods as well as the clarity of your thinking. This is why the ancient sages ate only light foods. They knew that anything more would disturb the perfectly peaceful minds they had worked so hard to cultivate and disrupt their meditation on the true meaning of life. If you owned an expensive Formula 1 race car, you wouldn't think of fueling it with anything less than premium grade gas. Anything else would reduce its performance. So why would you put anything less than best foods into your body, which is an even more valuable performance vehicle? Eating the wrong foods in large quantities will reduce your energy level and affect your health and prevent your mind from serving you to its fullest capacity. Realizing that for every greasy lunch you have, you will suffer a corresponding reduction in your level of motivation and effectiveness and it's the step of developing more disciplined eating habits. One of the best strategies I can share with you is to boost you both your energy level and your mood is to get into daily habit of drinking fresh fruit juice. On the counter of our kitchen at home sits one of my prized possessions, one that has added years to my life and life to my ears, my juice machine. Investing in a juicer and discovering the life-giving value of fresh juice is a smart move. The juices you can make taste great and I cannot begin to describe how wonderful you will feel once you start drinking a glass of strawberry apple or orange grape juice every morning before you leave for work. The best book I have found on this subject is Juicing is the Juice Man Power of Juicing by Jay Cordage. The recipes Cordage shares in this book are worth the price alone. Chapter 52 Create a Pure Environment One of the timeless truths of successful living can be stated simply, your thoughts form your world, what about you focus on your life grows, what you think about life expands and what you dwell on determines your destiny. Life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It gives you just about what you expect from it. As Helen Keller said, no pessimist can ever discover the secret of stars or sail to an uncharted land or open a new heaven to the human spirit. Given this principle, the first step to become happier, more serene person is to manage your thoughts and purify your thinking. One of the best ways to begin this inner work is to improve the quality of your personal environment. After a speech I gave to a large gathering in San Francisco, an elderly woman slowly walked up to me and held my hand, as people in their golden years often do. Looking straight into my eyes, she said, Mr. Sharma, I have listened to your insights for living a better life for the past hour and I agree with everything you've said. I agree with everything you've said. For many years, I have understood that our surroundings shape our moods our thoughts and our dreams and so in every room of my little house i have a bouquet of freshly cut flowers i'm not a wealthy woman but this one is luxury i would never do without this woman knew that a first class environment is an investment not expense take a good hard look at your environment your thoughts are shaped by the people you associate with by the books you read by the words you speak and by your daily physical surroundings are you spending your time at work with negative people? If so, they will eventually make you negative and cynical. Are you watching violent TV shows and mindless videos at home? If so, your mind will grow restless and noisy. Is the space you work in bright, colorful and inspiring? Over the coming weeks, take the steps to make the environment you work and live in a better one. You will quickly detect the improvement in the way you think and feel and act. Chapter 53 Walk in the Woods You will never go wrong by spending time enjoying in the nature. There is something particularly special about walking in the woods. Your step will feel lighter, a deep sense of inner quiet will flood your entire body and your creativity will flourish. As the famed Italian architect and painter Leonardo da Vinci said, through the window of the eye the soul regards the world's beauty who could believe that a small scene of nature could contain images of universe? My favorite time of the year is autumn. The leaves on the trees reflect the brilliant colors of the season and it's the perfect time for long walks in the wood. Away from the noise of city, the values I hold dearest grow clearer and I can contemplate some of life's larger questions 
questions that never seem to get answered in a normal crush of daily routine. I can stop by a small stream and relax on a moss-covered rock on or inhale the fragrances that only those who walk in the woods would truly experience. When I leave the oasis of the nature, I am a new man. I am more alert, more energized and more alive. Many of great wisdom traditions have emphasized the restorative great power of regular walks in the wood. This life-giving discipline never fails to yield a bounty of welcome results. Chapter 54 Chapter 54 Get a Coach One of the most effective ways to improve your personal and professional effectiveness and to rise to a new level of your excellence is to find a mentor to coach you. Success in business and life is a connect the dots process. All you need is to do find out the habits, disciplines and strategies that others have used to obtain their results and connect the dot by duplicating their actions. Once you follow the steps they have taken in order that they have taken them in, you are bound to get the same results. A personal coach can illuminate your path, encourage you when the time gets tough and shave years off your learning curve. In my own life, I have been blessed with many mentors, people who have shown me fundamentals of effectiveness, living and guided me in the right direction. When I reached the crossroad, I found the special advisors by asking people whom I admired one of the most powerful questions in all the English language. Would you please help me? Not one of the people I approached refused to offer me a gift of their knowledge and benefit of their experience. Many of my mentors have since become valued friends and my life would not be what it now without them. Coaching has become one of the most important element to the complete program of personal and professional experiences. People from all walks of life and have recognized this as one of the best ways to create a positive changes and lasting results in their lives. As an executive in one of the more monthly life coaching programs, I offer cities across the country recently said, Inspirational books helped me to define my dreams. Being in your personal coaching program showed me precisely how to achieve them while bringing back the balance in my life. Chapter 55 Take a Mini Vacation While you cannot go on a major vacation every week, you certainly can go on a minor one. A mini vacation begins with closing the door of your office, holding all calls and relaxing in your chair. Then close your eyes and begin taking deep breaths. Once you feel deeply at peace, begin to imagine at your favorite vacation spot, vividly see the colors, hear the sounds and feel the emotions that the special plague evokes. Only after a few minutes of this mental escape, you will be rejuvenated, ready for the rest of the day ahead. When I take my mini vacations, I picture myself walking through the mountain meadow. I visualize my feet on the dewy grass and savor the splendor of the snow-capped mountain that frame this ideal scene. In the background, I hear the sound of water from a waterfall and imagine what the flowers that fill this field smell like. Our minds are extremely potent devices. The subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between an image that we envision and one that is real. So this little technique actually fools it into thinking we are taking a quick break from our daily routine and invokes many of the wonderful physical benefits or benefits of our real vacation. Chapter 56 Become a Volunteer I find a great deal of wisdom in the ancient Persian proverb I wept because I had no shoes until I saw a man with who had no feet. It is so easy to magnify our problems and lose sight of many blessings we all have to be so very grateful for. Giving the gift of your time by volunteering to serve those who have less than you is an excellent way to remind yourself on a regular basis of the abundance that exists in your life. After a keynote speech I did on leadership I delivered to the sales team of a large insurance company a man came up to me and told me he was one of the top producers in the firms and um, uh, producers. One of the reasons of his success, he said, was his habit of spending a few hours a week helping those who are less fortunate than he was. Seeing what others don't have keeps me awake to all the good things I do have. It prevents me from taking things for granted and even more importantly, helps me make the differences between the lives of people who really need me. French physician Albert Schweitzer 
observed i do not know what your destiny will be but one thing i do know the only ones among you who will be happy are those who have sought and found how to serve and any moral lindberg wrote one can never pay in gratitude one can only pay in kind somewhere else in life volunteering affords you to the chance to who help to pay back the debt or though to those who have helped you chapter 57 find your 6 degrees of separation in john guarey's play 6 degrees of separation the character ausia has a conversation with her daughter tess in which she offers the following insight I read somewhere that everybody on this planet is separated by only 6 people 6 degrees of separation between us and everybody else on this planet the president of united states a gondolier of venice fill in the names i find that a, a, a tremendously comforting that we are close to and b like chinese water torture that we are close because you have to find six right people to make the connection it's a profound thought that how every person is a new door opening up into other worlds six degrees of separation between me and pran me and everyone else on this planet but to find right six people ausia was right it is profound to think that you and i are separated from all other people living on this planet by at most six people She was also right in noting the real challenge finding right six people to connect you to the person you need to know. One of the things I have done in my own life is to create why what I call a hero list. That is a list of 100 women and men I would most like to meet before I die. Since the law of attraction says that we attract into our life that which we focus on, this is a list tool I use to help me connect to the people I admire the most. on more than one occasion the 6 degrees of separation principle has helped me find the right sequence of individuals who have led me to the person i have wanted to meet and i am continually astounded by how many of the individuals on my list which include celebrities business leaders and other professional speakers seems to cross my path in the airport to be speaking at the same conference that i am or having lunch at the same place that i am The very act of listening my heroes seems to create a heightened sense of awareness that helps me spot them when they are close at hand. Chapter 58 Listen to music daily. In my most memorable scene of the wonderful movie Jerry Maguire, Tom Cruise's character, a hard-driving sports agent, has just signed up one of the hottest draft picks in football. As he drives away from the athlete's home in a state of utter joy, he impatiently searches for station to station on his car radio for the kind of song he can turn up loud and sing along at the top of his lungs. Finally, he to his great delights, he finds it. Tom Petty's head free falling and he begins to sing his heart out. Do you remember those times when you just heard the right song at the right moment, just like Jerry Maguire? You started singing loud out and dancing with reckless abandon. In those moments you feel felt fully alive, full of energy and truly happy. And all because you heard a few chords strung together in a right sequence. Music can do uh, that to you. Music can uplift your mood, put the smile back on your face and add immeasurably to your quality of life. Get serious about listening to music that inspires you. Build a collection of your favorite pieces and play some of them. For me, some moods call for a soothing piece of classical or soft jazz selection. When I'm writing a new book, for example, I will often listen to John uh, Johann Peisbel's Canon in D or jazz legend Chet Baker's Round Midnight Completion. If you have attended one of my seminars you might have recognized the more upbeat music played before I step on to the stage even when I travel I will uh, bring along my walkman and listen to inspiring music even such as soundtracks of the movies of Braveheart and Everest on the plane listening to even a few minutes of music every day is simple yet exceptionally powerful way to manage your moods and remain at your best Chapter 59 some uh, write a legacy statement someone once said to me that first 50 of years are dedicated to build one's legitimacy while the last 50 are depend de de devoted to building one's legacy how true 
So many of us spend the first half of our lives striving for achievement and struggling to gain respect. Once we have this legitimacy, whether it comes in the form of prestige or material possession, we soon realize that something is missing. We then spend the remaining year of our life trying to do what should we have done in the beginning, creating a legacy. One day, my father posted a poem on the door of our fridge. It had been translated from Sanskrit and read simply, Spring has passed, summer has gone and winter is here. And the song I meant to sing remains unsung. I have spent my days stringing and unstringing my instrument. These words were written by a man whose heart was filled with regret over a li life half-lived. Rather than singing the great song he destined to sing, he spent his days preparing and waiting until the things were just right before he acted, stringing and unstringing his instrument. In his words, sadly, the time never came. The time to start building your legacy is today, not 10 years from today when you have more time, because we both know that time will never arrive. Reflect on what is you want to create in your life and more importantly, what gift you wish to leave the world uh, you wish to leave the world when you are no longer here greatness comes from the beginning something that does not end with you to help me with my own life legacy more clearly i have written personal legacy statement while many of the corporate executive i work have personal mission statements few have considered scripting individual legacy statements while the former defines your vision what you want to create while you live the latter expresses what you aim to live, leave when you die. There is a distinct dis uh, distinction between the two. If you think about it, it will help you avoid feeling regret, sadness and disappointment about what you have could done when you reach the end of your life. Chapter 60. Find three great friends. Cultivating great friendship is one of the surest ways to find more happiness and joy in your life. Recent studies shows that those with a wide circle of friends and family live longer, laugh more and worry less. But friendship like other good things in life take time, energy and commitment. Having said this, few things will offer great rewards. As one philosopher wrote many centuries ago, there is nothing in the world more valuable than friendship. Those who banish it from their lives move, remove, uh, those who banish it from their lives remove as it were the sun from the earth because all of nature's gift is the most beautiful and more pleasing. As, as I grew up, my father often said that person with three great friends is a rich person indeed. I have never forgotten this advice and encourage you to take it to heart as well. To build a deeper friendship, you must be willing to move out of your comfort zone, break the ice with people you might know not very well and show sincere warmth. If you plant the seeds of friendship, you are bound to receive a rich harvest of great friendships. Friends, at a cocktail party, have the courage to walk over someone you would like to get to know better and introduce yourself. Every human being has a deep need of affection and most people will be delighted you took to the initiative. And if they do not respond to you, so what? Rather than viewing it as a rejection, See it as their loss and politely move on to the next person who can benefit from all you have to offer. A while ago, my mother's car had a flat tire while she was on her way to do an errand. She asked a stranger who was watering the lawn in front of her house whether she would mind, mind if mom left her car in their driveway while she walked to the gas station nearby to get help. The woman said she didn't mind and so my mother left it. After returning and having the flat tire repaired, Mom went to the front door of the house and warmly thanked the owner for her kindness. Woman in turn invited mother in for a cup of tea. Over the next hours, the two of them discovered they had grown up in the same town, gone to the same school and knew, knew many of the same people. The great friendship developed simply because my mother took initiative to make a new friend. Chapter 61 Read Artist's Way we are all the creative beings. When I first saw the artist's way on my favorite shelf of the bookstore years ago, I was still practicing law. I did not pick it up. At time, I believed it was only for artists and that I would therefore not benefit from it. Over time, however, I realized that every single one of us has almost limitless wellspring of creativity with us. 
that is deep within with us and we all need to use this creativity on a daily basis to get the most uh, most from life whenever whether we are lawyers homemakers teachers business executives poets or musicians the realization that i as a lawyer was a creative being creating a whole new awareness for me i started to attend seminars on creativity i also read more books on the subject and searched for ways i could express this natural creativity to improve the way that i lived personally and professionally and spiritually eventually my search led me to write my first book read the artist's way and have the self discipline to go through each of the thoughtful exercises the author julia cameron suggests you unlocking your creative spirit will fuel your upward path for self discovery and make every single or one of your days far more fulfilling chapter 62 learn to meditate The French mathematician Blaise Pascal wrote all man's miseries derive from not being able to sit quietly in a room alone we have become experts at filling our lives with noise and activities we wake up to the sound of radio blaring and dress while television news on we drive to work listening to latest traffic report and spend the next 8 hours in bustling office when evenings activities against the background sound of television ringing phone and humming computers Pascal was right. Most of our miseries do stem from the fact that we have lost sight of the importance of being silent for even a short period every day of our lives. Without the ability to concentrate, a full and complete life is not possible. If you lack the mental focus to stay with one activity for any length of time, you will never be able to achieve your goals, build your dreams or enjoy life's process. Without a disciplined mind, Trivial thoughts and worries will nag you at you and you will never have the capacity to immerse yourself in more meaningful pursuits. Without deep concentration, your mind will be master, your master rather than your servant. My own life changed the day I learned to meditate. Meditate is not some new age practice reserved for monks sitting atop mountains. On the contrary, meditation is an old age technique that was developed by some of the world's wisest people to gain full control of the mind and in doing so to manifest it uh, at our enormous potential for worthy pursuits meditation is a method to train your mind to function in the way it was designed to function and here's the key benefit the peace and tranquility you will feel after 20 minutes of daily meditation you uh, daily meditation and here's the key benefit infuse every remaining minute of your day you will be more patient in your relationships more serene at the office and more happy when you are alone meditation will make you far better parent life partner business person and friend you cannot afford to discover a few can afford cannot afford not to discover the power of this 5000 year old mind training discipline chapter 63 have a living funeral When I was doing research for the monk who sold his Ferrari, I came across a story of an Indian Maharaja who would engage in a bizarre morning ritual. Every day, immediately after waking up, he would celebrate his own funeral, complete with music and flowers. All the while, he would chant, "I have lived fully. I have lived fully. I have lived fully." When I first read this, I could not understand the purpose of this man's ritual. So I asked my father for some guidance. His reply was this son what is this maharaja doing is doing connecting to his mortality every day of his life so he will live each day as if it were his last his ritual is a very wise one and reminds him of the fact that time slips through hands like grains of sand and the time to live life greatly is not tomorrow but today one's sense of mortality is a great source of wisdom while on his deathbed plato was asked by a friend to summarize his great life's work the dialogues after much reflection he replied only two words practice dying the ancient thinkers had said had a saying that captured the point of plato made in other terms death out to be right there before the eyes of those who are young just as much before the eyes of those who are very old every day therefore should be regulated as if it were the one that brings up the rear and that one rounds and complete our lives Having a living funeral will reconnect you to the fact that time is a priceless commodity and the best time to live a richer, wiser and more fulfilling life is now. 
Chapter 64 Stop Complaining and Start Living Stop complaining about having no time for yourself and get up an hour earlier. You have the option, why not exercise it? Stop complaining about not being able to exercise given all that is on your plate these days. If you sleep 7 hours a night and work 8 hours a day, you still have more than 63 hours of free time every week to do all things you want to do. This amounts to 252 hours every month and 3024 hours every single year to spend on life pursuits. There has been a more exciting time to be alive in the history of the world and you have to the choice to seize the boundless possibilities that every day presents. If you are not as fulfilled or as happy as the prosperous or as peaceful as you know you could be, stop blaming your parents or the economy or your boss and take full responsibility for your circumstances. This will be the first step to completely new way of looking at your life and the starting point of a better way to live. As George Bernard Shaw said, the people who get on this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want and if they can't find them, make them. Make wiser choices about the thoughts you will allow to enter your mind as well as the attitude you will bring to your days and the way you will spend the hours of your time. Stop complaining and start living. In the words of the poet Rudyard Kripling, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. Chapter 65 Increase Your Value In the new economy, you now find yourself in you will be much compensated but not by how hard you work but by how much value you add to the world around you. Think about it. If you are currently being paid $20 an hour, this money is being given you not simply because you showed up at the desk for those 60 minutes but because you have added $20 worth perceived value during those 60 minutes. So the monetary reward by you received is determined by not by how long you work but by how much value you add to it. This is why the brain surgeon is paid so much more than a McDonald's employee. Is brain surgeon better than a better person? Not necessarily. Is the brain surgeon a harder worker? No, probably not. Is brain surgeon smarter? Who knows. But one thing is certain, the brain surgeon has accumulated far more specialized knowledge and specific know-how than McDonald's employee. There are far fewer people who can do what the brain surgeon does and as a result, brain surgeon is perceived as far more valuable to the marketplace. This is why the brain surgeon is paid over 10 times more than the person who flips burger. Money simply becomes a symbol for how much person, uh, how much value each person has added to the world at large. So to be paid more money in your work, you must add more value to the world and the best way to begin adding value to the world is to start becoming more valuable person. Acquire skills no one else has, read books no one else is reading, think thoughts no one else is thinking or to put it another way, you cannot have all that you want if you remain the person you are. To get more from life, you need to be more in life. Chapter 66 Be a Better Parent the way you raise your children is the way you raise your future generations. Since few of us had formal training in the fine art of parenting, most of us simply treat our children as the way parents treated us. We know no other way to do it. Although being a parent is a great joy, it is also a privilege that involves tremendously responsibilities. While I would do anything for my two children, that willingness is not enough. We need to develop the skills of excellent parents. We cannot just hope that the way we are raising our kids is the right way and pray that we will lucky enough they become thoughtful, caring and wise adults. We must take the initiative to improve our parenting abilities by attending seminars, reading books and listening to audio cassettes by the leading thinkers in this field. Then we must have the courage to keep trying to refine the ideas we learn in the laboratory of our own lives in order to find the parenting strategies that best suit our families. I know your life is, uh, life is busy and there is too much to do in too little time, but those miraculous years of your son's and daughter's childhood will never come again. And if you do not devote the time and effort to becoming the best parent, one day you will deeply regret the lost opportunity. As one father who attended the seminar I gave in Toronto said, 
when my son was growing up he constantly asked me to give him piggy bag rides though though i knew how much he loved them i was always too busy with to play with him i had reports to read or meetings to attend now that he is grown up and left our home i have realized one thing i would do anything i would give anything in the world to give that little boy a piggy bag ride 67 be unorthodox rossi wrote take the course opposite to the custom and you will almost always do well the brilliant ads for apple computer inspire us to think different or as i tell audiences at my leadership speeches if you follow the crowd the place you will most likely end up at is at the exit to live a richer more rewarding life it is essential that you run your own race stop bending to your demands of social pressure at the expenses of your uniqueness When you study the lives of the world's most enlightened and effective people you will see that they did not care about what people thought of them rather than letting public opinion dictate their action they had courage to let their hearts drive them and in taking the road less traveled they found success beyond of their wildest dream one of the best quotations about the importance of being unorthodox comes from Christopher Morley who said read every day something no one else is reading think every day something no one else is thinking it is bad for the mind to be always part of anonymity and perhaps the very best one comes from emerson it is easy in the world to live after the world's opinion it is easy in solitude to live after our own but the great man is he who in the midst of the crowd keeps with perfect sweetness and independence of solitude Over the next month rethink the way you do things don't just do things because everyone else does them do the things that are right for you being different for all right reason is a wise way to live just ask einstein picasso galileo or beethoven chapter 68 carry a goal card time and time again i have witnessed high functioning top performing men and women carrying a little goal card in their wallets that they can review during the quieter moments of their day the card simply lists their top life goals along with the clear deadlines for achieving them the discipline of reconnecting to your highest priorities whether they are personal professional or spiritual is a smart one montaigne said The great glorious masterpiece of man is to live to the point the wisdom of succinctity succinctly expressed and yet most of us live our lives like one long year and raid drill filling our days with activities that seem important in the moment but that count for little in the overall scheme for our lives as i wrote leadership wisdoms from the monk who sold his ferrari the person who tries to do everything ultimately accomplishes nothing having a goal card having a goal card and coming back to it 3 to 4 times a day will keep your mind centered on the things that truly count it will foster the self control you need to concentrate only on activities that advance your goal give you the discipline to say no to all the rest and in doing so restore focus to your days i promise you that if you spend your life focusing on only the worthiest pursuits it is certain to end in complete joy Chapter 69 Be more than your moods For much of my life I believed that my thoughts were beyond my control they just entered my mind automatically and did whatever they wished to do even worse I believed that I and I did whatever they wished to do even worse I believed that I was my thoughts thankfully I discovered that nothing could be further from the truth we are not our thoughts instead we are the thinkers of our thoughts We are the creators of the thoughts that flow through our minds and given this fact we can change our thoughts if we choose to do so This seemingly obvious insight and epiphany for me I soon became far more aware of thoughts I allowed into my mind and the inner dialogue that takes place within every one of us every waking hour of our living being day I began to pay complete attention to the quality of my thoughts this awareness was one the step for changing them Over a matter of months I trained my mind to focus only on positive inspiring and enlightening thoughts and in doing so I saw the outer circumstances of my life change just as you are not your thoughts you are not your moods you are the creator of the moods you experience moods that you can change in a single instant 
if you choose to do so you can feel peace in a moment of stress joy in a time of sadness and energy during a time of fatigue chapter 70 savor the simple stuff no one gets to take his possessions with him when he dies i have yet seen a moving fan van following a hearse at a funeral at the end of the day the only thing we can take us are memories of those great life experiences and adding meaning to our lives given this i would rather spend my days doing things that will leave me happy memories than collecting possessions I have discovered that my best memories come from life's simplest things. The day my daughter Bianca learned to walk, my son's first Kolbai Christmas concert where he spent more time waving to his proud dad in the audience than singing the assigned song, the day our family played soccer in the rain and the and the evening we barbecued hot dogs under full harvest moon. Dale Carnage wrote, "One of the most tragic things I know about human nature is that All of us tend to put off living. We are all dreaming of some magical rose garden over the horizon instead of enjoying the roses that are blooming outside our window today. Have the wisdom to savor the simple things. The wonderful memories that they bring will add more value to your life than any of the material toys we spend so much life energy pursuing. As Emma Goldman noted, I'd rather have roses on my table than diamonds on my neck. Chapter 71 Stop condemning Like the voice vice of complaining discussed earlier it is easy to fall into the habit of condemning others even those we love most we criticize the ways the way someone eats or manner in which she speaks we focus most on minor details and find fault with the smallest of issues but what we focus on grows and if we keep focusing on a small weakness in someone it will continue to grow in our minds until we perceive it to a big problem in that person would you really want to live in a world where everyone looked acted and threw the hot exactly as you do it would be pretty boring place to live a happier more peaceful life begin to see that the riches of our society comes from its diversity What makes relationships, communities and countries great are not the things that we have common but the differences that make us unique. Rather than looking for the things to criticize in those around you, why not begin to respect the differences? Often we perceive in others the weakness we most need to address within ourselves. Stop blaming and condemning. Accept complete responsibility for the way the things are and resolve to work on changing yourself. before seeking to change others this is one of the truest measures of a person of a strong character as arika jong said take your life into your hands and what happens a terrible thing no one to blame chapter 72 see your day as your life the days come and go like muffled and veiled figures sent from a distance friendly party but they say nothing and if we do not use the gifts they bring they carry them as a silent way observed emerson as you live your days so you will live your life it is easy to get caught up in the trap of thinking that this day does not matter much given all the days that lie ahead of you but a great life is nothing more than a series of great well lived days strung together like a beautiful necklace of pearls every day counts and contributes to the quality of the end results the past is gone the future is but a figment So this day is really all you can own invest it wisely your life is not dress rehearsal lost opportunities rarely come again today vow to increase your passion for living and multiple multiply the commitment you will bring to each of your days that will follow this one many people think that it takes months and years to change your life respectfully i disagree You change your life to the second you the may you make decision from the depth of your heart to be better more dedicated human being what takes the months and years are the efforts you must apply to maintain that decision and the best life change decision you will ever take is the one of the live every moment of your days to the fullest as golf legend ben hogan said as you walk down from the fairway of life you must smell the roses only for you only get to play one around Chapter 73 Create a Mastermind Alliance In his brilliant book Think and Grow Rich 
Self help pioneer Napoleon Hill advises readers to form a mastermind group if they aim to improve the quality of their lives and get what they want. He defines the mastermind alliance in these terms coordination of knowledge and effort in a spirit of harmony between two or more people for attainment of a definite purpose. Hill adds, no two minds ever come together in a spirit of harmony without hereby creating a third invisible intangible force which may be link likened to a third mind. Many of successful people I personally coach or whom I have set many seminars have told me that one of the things they did to help them create both create both business and personal lives they wanted was to form their own mastermind alliance. In doing so, they not only developed a personal support network and some great friendships, they tapped into specialized knowledge and accumulated wisdom they ordinarily would never have had access to. To form your own mastermind alliance, find three or four people you feel you could learn from and who could get along with well with other of groups. The alliance is all about mutual benefit, so you must be able to give as much as you expect to receive. Approach your prospective members and arrange to start meeting once a week. Early morning meetings are the best as they force each member to show his commitment to the group. With the advances in technologies, uh, technologies, you no longer have to meet in person, although this will be important to do every day. Telephone conferences call, electronic communication, and even faxes will work. At the appointed time, discuss the challenge you are facing and ask for the group's input. Discuss the success principles and life lessons that have proved their effectiveness time and time, time and time again, along with ways to live with greater balance. Not only cut your uh, no balance, fulfillment and inner peace, a mastermind alliance will not only cut your learning curve in the game of life, it will help you have much more fun playing it. Chapter 74. Create a daily code of conduct. It is easy to live your life like a leaf in the fall wind, moving in whatever direction the wind blows that day. To create a great life, you must live more intentionally, deliberately and passionately so that you live on your own terms rather than on someone else. The real challenge is that with so much to do, it is easy to allow life to act on you and watch the days quickly slip into weeks, then into months and finally into years. But I have a solution. In my own life, I have created what I call my daily core of conduct. It is simple, simply three paragraphs containing of values or virtue containing the values, virtues and vows I have determined through much reflection that I need to live by in order for my life to be a fulfilling one. For example, part of the first paragraph states, over the next 24 hours, I vow to appreciate this day as it is a really all I have and I use to every minute wisely and fully. So much can be done over the next 24 hours and to advance my life's agenda and complete legacy. I will throughout the day remember that this could be my last day that and that no person ever died with their music still within them. My code then outlines my dearest values and vows as they relate to my family, my community and myself. Reading my daily code of conduct at the very beginning of the day and during the base camp period, I described as an earlier reminds me of the things that matters the most in my life and reconnects me to my highest priorities, priorities that are so easily forgotten in the blur of the daily events. After reading my code, I feel energized, committed and ready to go out into the world with a renewed sense of purpose and focus. Creating your own daily code of conduct will do the same for you. Chapter 75 Imagine a Richer Reality Albert Camus once wrote, In the midst of winter, I had found that there was with me within me an invincible summer. We really don't discover how powerful and resilient we are, uh, uh, we are until we face some adversity that fills our mind with the stress and hearts we pain. Then we realize that we all have within us is the courage and capacity to handle even the greatest curves life may throw our way. Many of the men and women who had attended my leadership seminars come to me after the session and reveal the challenges they face in their lives. 
Some speak of difficulties, they have nothing motivating their employees in these uncertain times. Others speak of inner longings and the need to find a greater sense of meaning and fulfillment through their work. And still others ask me for advice on how to restore balance within their personal lives. My response always begins with the same lesson. To improve your life, you must first improve your thinking. Or as the old saying goes, we see the world not as it is but as we are. Our greatest human endowment is the ability to reframe and reinterpret the difficult circumstances in a more enlightened and empowering way. Dogs cannot do this, cats cannot do this, monkeys cannot also cannot do this. This gift belongs to only to us and is the part what makes us human. Blaming our circumstances for the way we feel is nothing more than excusing ourselves. In handling any problem, we must first have the courage to assume a measure of responsibilities for whatever situation we are in and then realize that we also have the capacity to use the setback to our advantage. Life's greatest setback always reveal life's biggest blessings. Chapter 71 Stop Condemning Like the voice, voice of complaining discussed earlier, it is easy to fall into the habit of condemning others, even those we love most. We criticize the ways the way someone eats or manner in which she speaks. We focus most on minute deals and find fault with the smallest of issues. But what we focus on grows. And if we keep focusing on a small weakness in someone, it will continue to grow in our minds until we perceive it to a big problem in that person. Would you really want to live in a world where everyone looked, acted and threw thought exactly as you do? It would be a pretty boring place. To live a happier, more peaceful life, begin to see that the riches of our society comes from its diversity. What makes relationships, communities and countries great are not the things that we have common, but the differences that make us unique. Rather than looking for the things to criticize in those around you, why not begin to respect the differences? Often we perceive in others the weakness we most need to address within ourselves, stop blaming and condemning, accept complete responsibility for the way the things are and resolve to work on changing yourself before seeking to change others. This is one of the truest measures of a person of a strong character. As Arika Jong said, take your life into your hands and what happens? A terrible thing. No one to blame. Chapter 72 See your day as your life. The days come and go like muffled and veiled figures sent from a distance, friendly party but they say nothing and if we do not use the gifts they bring, they carry them as a silent way observed Emerson. As you live your days, so you will live your life. It is easy to get caught up in the trap of thinking that this day does not matter much given all the days that lie ahead of you. But a great life is nothing more than a series of great, well-lived days strung together like a beautiful necklace of pearls. Every day counts and contributes to the quality of the end results. The past is gone, the future is but a figment so this day is really all you can own, invest it wisely. Your life is not dress rehearsal. Lost opportunities rarely come again. Today, vow to increase your passion for living and multiple, multiply the commitment you will bring to each of your days that will follow this one. Many people think that it takes months and years to change your life. Respectfully, I disagree. You change your life to the second you the may you make decision from the depth of your heart to be better, more dedicated human being. What takes the months and years are the efforts you must apply to maintain that decision. And the best life change decision you will ever take is one of the live every moment of your days to the fullest. As golf legend Ben Hogan said, as you walk down from the fairway of life, you must smell the roses only for you only get to play one around. Chapter 73 Create a Mastermind Alliance In his brilliant book Think and Grow Rich, self-help pioneer Napoleon Hill advises readers to form a mastermind group if they aim to improve the quality of their lives and get what they want. He defines the Mastermind Alliance in these terms. Coordination of knowledge and effort in a spirit of harmony between two or more people for attainment of a definite purpose. Hill adds, no two minds ever come together in a spirit of harmony without hereby creating a third 
invisible intangible force which may be link likened to a third mind many of successful people i personally coach or whom i have set many seminars seminars have told me that one of the things they did to help them create both create both business and personal lives they wanted was to form their own mastermind alliance in doing so they not only developed a personal support network and some great friendships they tapped into specialized knowledge and accumulated wisdom they ordinarily would never have had access to to form your own mastermind alliance find three or four people you feel you could learn from and who could get along with well with other of groups the alliance is all about mutual benefit so you must be able to give as much as you expect to receive approach your prospective members and arrange to start meeting once a week early morning meetings are the best as they force each member to show his commitment to the group with the advances in technologies uh, technologies you no longer have to meet in person although this will be important to do every day telephone conferences call electronic communication and even faxes will work at the appointed time discuss the challenge you are facing and ask for the group's input discuss the success principles and life lessons that have proved their effectiveness time and time time and time again along with ways to live with greater balance not only cut your uh, no balance fulfillment and inner peace a mastermind alliance will not only cut your learning curve in the game of life it will help you have much more fun playing it chapter 74 create a daily code of conduct it is easy to live your life like a leaf in the fall wind moving in whatever direction the wind blows that day to create a great life you must live more intentionally deliberately and passionately so that you live on your own terms rather than on someone else the real challenge is that with so much to do it is easy to allow life to act on you and watch the days quickly slip into weeks then into months and finally into years but i have a solution in my own life i have created what i call my daily code of conduct it is simple simply three paragraphs containing of values or virtue containing the values virtues and vows i have determined through much reflection that i need to live by in order for my life to be a fulfilling one for example part of the first paragraph states over the next 24 hours i vow to appreciate this day as it is a really all i have and i use to every minute wisely and fully so much can be done over the next 24 hours and to advance my life's agenda and complete legacy i will throughout the day remember that this could be my last day that and that no person ever died with their music still within them my code then outlines my dearest values and vows as they relate to my family my community and myself reading my daily code of conduct at the very beginning of the day and during the base camp period i described as an earlier reminds me of the things that matters the most in my life and reconnects me to my highest priorities priorities that are so easily forgotten in the blur of the daily events after reading my code i feel energized committed and ready to go out into the world with a renewed sense of purpose and focus creating your own daily code of conduct will do the same for you Chapter seventy five. Imagine a richer reality. Albert Camus once wrote, "In the midst of winter, I had found that there was with me within me an invincible summer." We really don't discover how powerful and resilient we are, uh, uh, we are until we face some adversity that fills our mind with the stress and hearts we pain. Then we realize that we all have within us is the courage and capacity to handle even the greatest curves. life me throw away many of the men and women who had attended my leadership seminars come to me after the session and reveal the challenges they face in their lives some speak of difficulties they have nothing motivating their employees in these uncertain times others speak of inner longings and the need to find a greater sense of meaning and fulfillment through their work and still others ask me for advice on how to restore balance within their personal lives My response always begins with the same lesson to improve your life you must first improve your thinking or as the old saying goes we see the world not as it is but as we are 
Our greatest human endowment is the ability to reframe and reinterpret the difficult circumstances in a more enlightened and empowering way. Dogs cannot do this, cats cannot do this, monkeys cannot also cannot do this. This gift belongs to only to us and is the part what makes us human. Blaming our circumstances for the way we feel is nothing more than excusing ourselves. In handling any problem, we must first have the courage to assume a measure of responsibilities for whatever situation we are in and then realize that we also have the capacity to use the setback to our advantage. Life's greatest setback always reveal life's biggest blessings. Chapter 76 Become the CEO of our your life if it's going to be, it's up to me, is a wonderful mantra. I recently read it in a newspaper that fully 10% of the population is betting that they will win the lottery to finance their retirement. Too many people are leaving the quality of their futures to chance rather than to choice. It is, reminds me of the habit my brother had as a, had as a kid. When he saw that glass was about to fall off a counter, rather than rushing to save it from falling, he would cover his ears with his hand so that you could not hear the smash. He has since grown up and become a Harvard trained eye doctor, so his unique habit does not appear to have held him back all so much. This antidote's points of wisdom is simply this. We need to keep our ears and eyes open to the realities of life. If we don't act on life, take action to make things happen and it will act on us and give the result we might not want. This thousand of years uh, this happened of thousand of years this is one of the natural laws that governed humanity for thousand of years to become more proactive during the weeks ahead began to see yourself as the chief executive officer of your destiny the ceo of your life all effective ceos realize that if it's going to be it's up to me and act as a catalyst of their own dreams Similarly, if you want something done, rather than waiting for luck to look your way, take steps to get it done. If there is something, someone you know could help you solve a problem or seize an opportunity, pick up the phone and call him or her. Remember, you can make excuses or you can make progress, but you cannot do both. When I was practicing law, I would make a 45-minute journey on a commuter train to my office in a downtown town. Every day, a man would sit in front of me whom I came to see to become the CEO of your life principal. Instead of sleeping or daydreaming like the most of people on train, this man used to uh, use his 45 minutes exercise. The moment we sat down for until the moment we arrived at the station, he would do arm stretches, neck rolls, a series of rigorous exercises to improve his health. Rather than joining the lean of the temper people who complain they don't have enough time to work out, he took the matters into his own hands and took the charge of the opportunity. Sure, he looked a little silly, but who cares about what others think when you know what you are doing is the right thing to do. Seeing yourself as the CEO of your life can create a fundamental shift in the way you perceive your world. Instead of sailing through the life as a passenger, you become the captain of the ships, leading things in the direction you choose to move in rather than reacting to whim of the changing tides. And as you take greater control of your life, reflect on William James' inspiring words. Humankind's common instinct for reality has always held the world to be essentially a threat for theater for heroism. Chapter 77 Be Humble One of the traits I respect most in people is humility. The tree that has most fruit is the tree that bends to the ground, my father taught me as I was growing up. And though there are some exceptions, I have found in my own experience that it is true. The people who know the most, who have achieved the most and who have lived the most are the people closest to the ground. In a word, they are very humble. There is something special about being the presence of a person who is humble. Practicing humility shows that you respect others and remind us that there is so much to, for us yet to learn. It sends a signal to those around you that you are open to receiving gift or of their knowledge and listening to what they say. I have had little privilege of meeting many famous people in life. One of my biggest thrill of meeting of Muhammad Ali, contrary to the cocky and loud image he cultivated in the media, in person he was a true gentleman and very model of humility.
When I had good fortune to meet him in Los Angeles, he asked me more questions than I asked about him. He spoke softly and radiated a warmth and decency that spoke volumes about the man he is. Muhammad Ali taught me that more you are as a person, the less you need to prove yourself to others. Chapter 78 Don't finish every book you start. It is so easy to feel compelled to finish every book you start. A great sense of guilt fills our mind if we don't reach the end of that book we used our hard earned dollars to buy. But not every book deserves to be read in its entirety. As Francis Bacon said, some books are to be tasted, others to be swallowed, and some are to be chewed and digested. That is, some books are to be read only in a part, others to be read, but not curiously, some books to read wholly with diligence and attention. I was myself guilty of feeling the need to read every day, every, every book I picked from the beginning to end. I soon found that not only did my reading pile become unmanageable, but I began to enjoy the past time of reading less. Once I decided I would be more selective about which books I actually completed, I not only got through more of them, I found I learned more from each of them. If you find that after reading the first three chapters of a book, you have not gained any worthwhile information, or that book has failed to keep your attention, do yourself a favor. Put the book you away and make better use of your time, like reading the next book in your pile. Chapter 79 Don't be so hard on yourself It is easy to spend much of your days beating up on yourself self for past mistakes. We analyze that relationship that failed and relentlessly review all the things we did wrong. Or we look at the business decision that cost us so much and dwell on the things we could have done right. Once and for all, stop being so hard on yourself. You are a human being and human beings have designed to make mistakes. As long as you don't keep making the same errors and have good judgment to let your past, ser uh, let your past serve you, you will be on the right track. Accept them and move on. As Mark Twain wrote, we should be careful to get out of an experience only the wisdom that is in. And stop there, lest we'll be like the cat that sits down on a hot stove lid. It will never sit down on a hot stove lid again, and that is, but also it will never sit down on a cold one anymore. Coming to the realization that we all make mistakes and that they are essential to our growth and progress is liberating. We lose the need to be perfect and adopt the same, saner ways of viewing ourselves. We begin to flow through life and the way a mountain stream flows through a leafy forest powerfully yet gracefully we can finally be at peace with our true nature. An excellent way to rise to a higher new level of enlightenment, personal wisdom is to make the list of the 10 biggest mistakes you have ever made in your life on the left hand side of the page within general. Then on the right hand side, write down the corresponding lessons you have learned from every mistakes and the benefits that actually flowed into your life as a result of those so called failures. You will soon see that your life would not be as rich and colorful without mistakes of your past. So be gentler to yourself and see for life what is really it is a path of self-discovery and personal growth and lifelong learning. Chapter 80 Make a Vow of Silence The Buddhist monks have favorite strategy to build willpower, one that has been used over many cultures over the year to create enormous amount of inner strength and resolve it. It is the vow of silence. Staying quiet for even short period of time builds willpower and self-control because you exert force on you that you will not, uh, you will by not giving in into the impulse to talk. So many people talk far more than they have to, rather than speaking precisely and communicating only what needs to be said. All too often we go on and on. This itself reveals a lack of discipline. Discipline involves saying exactly what needs to be said and preserving your precious mental energy by not taking more than you have to. Measured, precise speech is also a sign of clear thought and of serious mind. A strategy that you can apply to improve your personal discipline is to keep a vow of silence for one hour a day or over the next seven. Don't speak all during this time or if you must uh, speak only in direct response to a question and offer a clear response rather than rattling on about everything from what was on TV last night or to where you hope vacation summer. The vow of silence can be adopted politely and warmly. The idea is to make you stronger and to enhance your will 
not to hinder your relationships within a matter of days you will feel a sense of mastery and strength growing within you judge by the results they will speak by themselves chapter 81 don't pick up the phone every time it rings the telephone is there for your convenience not for the convenience of your callers yet as soon as we hear the phone ring we act as if we are firefighters rushing to a fire alarm fire we run to pick it up as if our lives dependent on the call being answered at once i have seen people interrupt quiet family dinners dedicated reading times and meditation periods to answer those seemingly urgent phone calls many of which turned out to be ones that could have been taken later voicemail though not perfect is in many ways of the great blessing of the modern age it is it frees you up to do things you won't be allowed to answer your calls when it suits you you no longer need to be interrupted by the ringing phone and you can spend your time on life's more important pursuits habit of picking up the phone every time it rings is a hard one to break as i know from personal experience it is so easy to run out to it simply because we want to know who is calling us often picking up the ringing phone is just another way of put off doing something you don't really want to do but once you get good at letting it ring and staying focused on the activity at hand whether it is a reading good book or having a heart to heart conversation with your partner or frolicking with your kids you will wonder that what is the hurry to pick up the phone was all about in the first place chapter 82 remember that recreation must involve recreation after a tiring day at work it is so easy to curl up on the couch and spend the next 3 4 hours watching television the irony is that if you are most loved people you will actually feel more affected after the watching too much tv than you felt when you sat first down recreation is tremendously important to a balanced life but recreation must serve to recreate you recreation must restore you and bring back to your life real recreation will fill you with a renewed sense of optimism and energy true recreation connects you to the highest and best within you while rekindling yourself in a fire As Plato noted my belief is not that good body by any bodily excellence improves the soul but on the contrary that a good soul by her own excellence improves the body as far as this may possible effective recreation must involve some pursuits that suits your soul Chapter 83 Choose worthy opponents I recently read that olympic athletes return from games some of them suffer from what psychologists call pod post olympic depression after being in the world's spotlight and training for years to excel in the competition the athletes who suffer from this affliction fall into a state of depression once they get back to their daily lives it seems that having an achieved the pinnacle of success there is no higher target for them to aim for and so life loses its meaning A similar phenomenon was experienced by the Apollo astronauts who walked on the moon. After achieving this, they grew dejected at the realization in the few things in the life and match and ex- excitement of traveling into space. To maintain a healthy level of optimism and passion for life, you must keep on setting higher and higher goals. On attaining one goal, whether it's a career goal or personal goal, it is essentially that you quickly set the next one. I call the process of setting the progressively and bigger more engaging goals choosing worthy opponents. When I was practicing law, I spent much of my time in courtrooms representing the interest of my clients. Over the years that argued these cases, I always found I performed the best when I appeared against my toughest opponent. Those bright, highly prepared, exceptionally focused litigators were fo- forced me to get on the core issue before the judge and deliver judge and deliver my arguments succinctly and effectively the worthiest opponent compelled me to reach deep within myself and do even better than i had previously in the same way selecting a steady stream of compelling goals will liberate the fullness of your talents remember diamonds are created through steady pressure so make certain your goals are worthy of you Make sure they are kind of challenges that will force you to reach into your heart and bring out the best within you, helping you grow in the process. 
in the personal coaching sessions I conduct around the country, many of the participants already have achieved what I would consider success in both their careers and lives. They are highly respected, influential and enjoy what they do while leading balanced, fulfilling and personal lives. Yet they join my program because they know deep down that they can be more and life holds great rewards store for them. They understand that in order to truly manifest the human potential and leave a legacy that lasts, they must keep raising the bar and holding themselves to a high standard. And because of that attitude of constant improvement, life does send greater blessings in their way. Chapter 84 Sleepless Thomas Edison's life story is one worth reading about. Part visionary, part gambler, part genius, he was a brilliant inventor who made the best use of his time on the planet. Though he had only six months of former schooling, he had read such as he had read such as classics of the decline and the fall of Roman Empire by the time he was eight and invented the phonograph which captured sound by records by the time he was thirty. A master of positive thinking, when someone asked him why during his last years he was almost totally deaf, he did not went and went a hearing aid, he replied. How much you have you heard in the last 24 hours that you couldn't do without? He then added with a smile, a man who knows he has to shout can never tell a lie. But what I remember the most about the special man was his rare ability to thrive on only 4 hours of sleep. Sleep is like a drug. Take too much time and it makes you dopey. You lose time, vitality and opportunities. Most of us asleep far more than we need to. We say ourselves that we must have at least 8 good hours of time under the covers in order to function at our best. We cannot imagine getting by on less sleep and shudder at the very thought. Yet as I wrote in an earlier session, lesson, it is the not the quantity of sleep that it is most important. What really counts is the quality and richness of your sleep. Just remember those quant times when everything in your life was working. You were thriving at office, fulfilled your relationship and growing in your inner life. You were overflowing with energy, passionate about every minute of your days. If you are like most people, you will also recall that during these times, you could get on by less sleep. As a matter of fact, there was so much to be excited about that you did not want to waste your time by oversleeping. Now reflect on those times of your lives when things were not going so well. Your job was exhausting, the people in your life were driving you crazy and you had the whole time for yourself. During these times, you probably slept longer than usual. Perhaps you were slept until 2 o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. Saturday. We often used to sleep in an escape from reality during difficult times. But how did you feel when you finally woke up, groggy, uninspired and tired? So it is not the number of hours of the sleep that is key rather than the amount of renewal your body receives. Strive for less time in a bed, but a richer and deeper sleep. Understand that fatigue is often mental creation that stems from doing things you do not like to do and remember that Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's wise words. The heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by a sudden flight, but they while their companions slept were toiling upward in night. Chapter 85 Have a Family Mealtime one of many great family traditions my wonderful mother created for us when I was growing up was having a family meal every day. No matter what activities we have had on the go, my father, my brother and I were duty bound to come home for a dinner where we could all reconnect, share our stories about the day that was drawing to a close. My dad would often go around the dinner table and ask us to share one new thing that we had learned. Or he would just pull out a newspaper clipping he had tucked away in his shirt pocket and engage us in a lively discussion relating to the story. The special tradition of a daily family meal throughout the family closer and gave me many happy memories. It is a tradition I have now brought into my own family life and one I hope my children will continue. Your family meal does not have to be dinner. We live in a busy time. We have endless personal communities committees and our, personal, our children have soccer practices, piano lessons and a ball at classes which might make it difficult to have a quiet meal in early evening hours. Your family meal could take place over breakfast or lunch if your schedule allows it for. 
It might be even a quick snack of milk and cookies at the very end of the day. The important thing is that you find some time every day to break bread, break bread with those you love most and consistently work at building a richer, more meaningful family life. Six, chapter 86 Become an Imposter Research has shown that the way you act influences the thoughts you think. If you look to ground, slouch over and generally model yourself physically after a depressed person, you will eventually start to feel depressed. If, on other hand, you smile and laugh and stand upright with your head held high, you will soon find that you feel much better, even though you may not have been great mood to begin with. Using this information, you can start to fake it till you make it. In other words, you can pretend to be the kind of the person you wish to be by consistently acting as a highly enthusiastic person might, uh, might or as truly confident person you would, you will eventually take on these personal attributes. The power of the act like you were most wish to become technique was demonstrated by a study at Stanford University in which a team of psychologists took a group of emotionally secure college students and randomly separated them into two groups with simulated prison setting. The first group was instructed to act like prison guards while other were told to take on the in characteristic of inmates. The behavior of the group members were affected so dramatically by this that the psychologists were forced to end it only 60 days. The inmates had become severely depressed, high sticker, and served from crying bouts while the guide behaved cruelly and uncaringly. As the student the study confirms that acting as if technique is a highly effective way to modify your behavior and transform into the person you plan to be. Chapter 87 Take a Public Speaking Course As a professional speaker who specializes in leadership, personal effectiveness and life improvement, I have privilege of appearing on programs that feature some of the world top experts such as Brian Tracy, the renowned motivational speaker, Professor John Cotter, the respected business guru, celebrities like Christopher Reeve and musical superstar like G. Will. I give keynote address about 75 major conferences a year and to speak large audiences across North America, in the Caribbean and in Asia. Yet, very few people know that the greatest fear of my life was once public speaking. While I was in school, I would avoid any opportunity to speak in front of a people for fear of failure. If a teacher asked me to give an oral report or the on the class or to speak on a certain subject, I would find always find some excuses not to. My fear of public speaking affected my conference confidence and prevented free me from doing many of my things I knew my heart I could do. I was not until the day I took a public speaking course from the Dale Carney organization that I began to change. And once I did, a new world unfolded for me. I have since I discovered I was not alone in my fear. It has been reported that most people fear speaking in front of an audience even more than death itself. Talking to a large group of people draws out from the circle of security that we tend to live in and forces us to confront entirely foreign experience. But two things can dramatically reduce your fear of public speaking as well as any other fear, preparation and practice. By taking public speaking course, you will that will prepare you for speaking before groups and offer you regular forum to practice in front of a group, you will soon manage your fear and eventually master it. Chapter 88 Stop Thinking Tiny Thoughts The British statesman Benjamin Disraeli once said, Nurture your mind with great thoughts, for you will never go any higher than you think. His words are profound and his point of wisdom is clear. It is not what you are that is holding you back in life, it's what you think you are not. It is that going to on your inner world that is preventing you from having all the, that you want. And the moment you fully understand this insight and set about writing your mind of all its limiting thoughts, you will see almost immediate improvements in your personal circumstances. In my motivational seminars, I tell my audience, says, if you are not pursuing your dreams, you are fueling your limitations. My brother, an internationally known eye surgeon, once told me about a medical condition called amblyopia, a condition that occurs when a patch of a place is over a young child's healthy eye. When the patch 
is removed the child has completely lost the sight of uh, that once good eye covering the eye stunts covering the eye stunts its development cause and causes blindness many of us suffer from our own form of amblyopia we go through life with blindness over our eyes afraid to dream bigger and dreams that do the things we fear the result is always same like the child with amblyopia we eventually lose our vision and spend the rest of the days with very limited zone of movement Too many people lead small lives. Too many of us die at twenty and are buried at eighty. Remember, nothing can stop a person who refuses to be stopped. Most people don't really fail; they simply give up trying. And most of the limitation that hold you back from your dreams are self-imposed. So shed the shackles of tiny thinking. Have the bravery to dream big for a change, and accept that failure is not an opinion for you. As Snake observed. It is not the because the things that are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare any that they are difficult. Chapter eighty nine. Don't worry about the things that you can't change. Time and time again, when I face a challenge in my own life, I return to the serenity prayer of Reinhold Niebuhr. God give us the grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed, courage to change the things which should be changed, and wisdom to distinguish one from another. One business executive who went through an exercise I use in my leadership coaching programs found that 54% of his worries related to things would be likely never happen. 26% were about past actions that could not be changed. 8% re- real related to the opinions of people who those opinions really did not matter to him. 4% concerned personal health issues, and only 6% concerned real issue worthy of his attention. By identifying them and letting go of his worry, he could do nothing about that were a complete waste of his energy. This man eliminated ninety-four percent of the four problems that had plagued him. Chapter ninety: Learn how to walk. Nearly ten years ago, I received a package in the mail from my father. It was worn-out old book that carried the following inscription inside the front cover: "Dear Robin, some time ago, I picked up this book from a store that sells second-hand book." Though the money paid by this war book nominal, it is net worth is tremendous. Enjoy reading it immensely, and I hope you will too. Love, Dad. Published in 1946, the book is called "Getting the Most Out of Life," and it is a one of the treasure in my library of wisdom literature and self-help books. I have written the short essays it containing on a wide range of life and topic improvements such as wake up. And live the business of living a long time and how to live twenty four hours a day, many times over the years, and have grown much from the lessons offered. It is truly a priceless possession. On a recent rainy day, I pulled out the book and flipped through the different chapters, stopping at one of the entitled "How to Take a Walk." In it, author Alan Devo shares his insights on how you can get the best out of walking. First, he advises a walk should never have a purpose. Rather than having a destination, you should simply immerse yourself in the beauty of walk itself. Second, you must never take your worries with you on the walk. Leave them at home, for if you don't, they will become even more deeply rooted in your mind. And by the end of your walk, and finally, it will be fully aware and to train yourself. And finally, be fully aware. Train yourself to pay complete attention to the sights of sounds and smells. Study the shape of leaves of the trees. observe the beauty of the clouds and the fragrance of the flowers as he concludes the world after all is not so undurable unendurable when a person gets a chance to look at it and smell it and feel its texture and be alone with it this acquaintance with the world this renewal of the magical happens such as one wonderment which you felt when you were a child such is the purpose of taking walks Chapter ninety one. Rewrite your life story. One of the most wonderful things about the time is the fact that you cannot waste it in advance. No matter how much time you have squandered in the past, the next hours that comes to you will be the perfect, unspoiled, and ready for you to make the very best of it. No matter what has happened to you in the past, your future is spotless. Realize that every dawn brings with it the corresponding opportunity to begin a completely new life. If you so choose, tomorrow can be the day that you can get start up early, reading more, exercising, eating well, and worrying less. As author Ashley Brilliant has observed, 
at any moment i could start being more of the person i dream to be but which moment should i choose no one is stopping you from opening your journal and on a blank page rewriting the story of your life this very minute you can decide the way you would like it to unfold change the central characters and create a new ending the only question it will you choose to do remember it is never too late to become the person you have always wanted to be chapter 92 plant a tree according to an ancient eastern thinking to live a fulfilling life you must do three things have a son write a book and plant a tree by doing so the thinking goes you will have three legacies that you will leave long after you die while there are clearly many more elements of a happy and complete life i would add to the joy of having a daughter to the list the idea of planting a tree is an excellent one watch a tree growing from a sapling into a tall oak will keep you connected with the daily passage of time and cycles of the nature just as the tree grows and matures so too will you be able to mark your personal passages and growth as a human being if you have children you might also have wish to plant a tree in honor of each of them as they grow so you can carve notches on the trunks to mark their different ages each tree then becomes a living record of a different life stage planting a tree for each child in your family is a wonderful and creative act of love and one that your kids will remember for many years to come chapter 93 find your place of peace everyone needs a sanctuary or a place of peace where they can go to be quiet and still this special place will be served as your oasis in a world of stress it will be a spot where you can take refuge from your crush of daily activities that demand your time energy and attention your sanctuary does not need to be fancy an unused bedroom or a corner of an apartment with some freshly cut flowers on the tables will do nicely even a wooden bench in your favorite park can serve as your place of peace when you feel you need some of the time alone visit this sanctuary and do some of those inner development activities that are so easy to neglect during the course of a busy day write in your journal or listen to a soothing piece of classical music close your eyes and visualize your ideal day read deeply from that book or your mother always told you about to read or from a book of wisdom or simply do nothing for 30 minutes and let the renewing power of solitude take your hold carving out a little time for yourself is not a selfish act replenishing your inner reserves allows you to may give more do more and be more for others making the time to care for your mind and spirit will keep you balanced enthusiastic and youthful and as lf phelan once told youth is not a time of life it is a state of mind people grow old by only deserting their ideals and outgrowing the consciousness of youth years wrinkle the skin but to give up enthusiasm wrinkles the soul you are as old as your doubt your fear your despair the way you keep young is to keep your faith young keep your self confidence young keep your hope young chapter 94 take more pictures every life is a worth living and given this every life is a worth recording so often a friend will tell me about a breathtaking sight on a recent vacation or something hilarious his child did at the christmas concert or about someone half famous he has met did you get it one on film i ask i love to see the photo next time comes reply i didn't have time to pick a new role but let me try and describe what happened to you a picture truly is worth thousand words photographs capture and record life's greatest memories so that we can relive them as the years go by as i grew up my father instantly constantly took pictures of our family whether it was a family picnic the first time i took his car out of for a spin or a simple gathering with friends he was taking their pictures simply often while he asked us to smile for the camera i would grow impatient and gently ask him to take the photo quickly you don't need to take so many of the photos dad i would say what are we going to do with them all well now as the years have quietly slipped by i know what to do with all those photos they have gone into the albums that forms part of the stories of life's passage they provide my own children with endless hours of amusement and offer our entire family a wonderful way to reflect on the simple things that have meant so much to us 
take more pictures record the best time of your lives and collect the photographs of the things that have made you smile or cry or appreciate many blessing in the world provides always carry a disposable camera in your car and to you or two in your luggage while you travel you might be surprised how good you feel when you go through the albums years now chapter 95 be an adventurer teachers are climbing mountains entrepreneurs are flying hot air balloons grandmothers are completing marathons and homemakers are taking up karate the more routine our lives become the greater our need to fill them with real adventures the more obligations that beg for our attention the more important it becomes to shed those shackles of complacency and send our hearts soaring through some brave new pursuits man must not allow the clock and the calendar to blind him to the fact that each moment of his life is a miracle and uh, a miracle and a mystery wrote the british novelist h g wells to connect more deeply to the brit miracles and the mysteries of your own life vow to restore the spirit and adventure that once you know as a child make a list of 12 pursuits you know where would bring the greatest sense of passion and energy to your normally mundane routine and tackle one of them every month for next four years doing so is a highly effective way to reinvent the way you live chapter 96 decompress before you go home after a day of stress and pressure at the office most of us arrive home cranky tired and dispirited we gave the best we had to our colleagues and customers and sadly had nothing left for the people we love the most our spouses our children and friends like like gladiator gladiators who have just completed the battle of their lives we wearily walk to the favorite easy chair and order family members to leave us alone uh, to leave us alone until we regain our composure taking 10 minutes to decompress before you walk through the fun door of your home will help you to avoid making this scenario of your daily routine rather than leaving work driving home and rushing into your house i recommended that you spend a few minutes sitting alone in your car while parked in driveway use this time to relax and reflect on what you would like to accomplish during the next few hours with your family remind yourself how much your partner and your children need you and how many fun things you can do to simply put into your mind to it to further decompress you could go for a quick walk around the block or listen to a favorite piece of classical music before you open the door and greet your family be creative about your personal decompression time and treat it as a chance to renew and recharge so you are the person your family wants you to be when you greet them chapter 97 respect your instincts it is not easy to listen what the quakers call the still small voice within that in a guide that is your personal source of wisdom it is often difficult to march your on your own beat and listen to your instincts when the world around you pressures you to conform at that to its dictates yet to find the fulfillment and the abundance you speak you seek you must listen to those hunches and feelings that come to you when you most needed them as i grow older i give far greater respect to my instincts and to natural reservoir of the intuitions that slumber within each one of us the impressions that i receive when i first meet a new person or that inner sense of wisdom that softly nudges me in the right direction during a trying time that have to come to play a larger part in the way i work and live it seems that age with age comes the corresponding ability to trust your own instincts i have also found that way that my personal instincts grow stronger when i am living on purpose that is to say spending my days on activities that advance me along the path to my legacy When you are doing the right things and living the way the nature intended you to live the abilities you were not aware you had become engaged and then you liberate the fullness of the person you really are as the indian philosopher patanjali eloquently wrote when you are inspired by some great purpose some extraordinary object all your thoughts break their bonds your mind transcends limit your consciousness expands in every direction and you find yourself in a new great and wonderful world dormant forces faculties and talents become alive and you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamed yourself to be 
collect code chapter 98 collect codes that inspire you if you have read the monk who sold his ferrari or any other of my books you know that i love using quotations from the world's great thinkers i never knew why i love these as much as i do until one of my mentors after reading a manuscript i had written said you love quotation for the same reason I do, Robin. A great quote contains wealth of wisdom in a single line. So often in my reading, I come across just the right quote which contains the ideal answer to a challenge I am facing. And my mentor was right. The value of the great quote does lie in the fact that it contains a world of wisdom, wisdom that may have taken the author many years to arrive at in a line or two. Over the next few weeks, start your own collection of quotation words that you can keep referring to when you need some instant inspiration or advice about how to deal with those curves of lies someone sends our way. Another effective way that I use quotes is to paste them in places I know where I will see them throughout the day such as on my bathroom mirror or the refrigerator door or the dashboard of my car or throughout my office. This simple discipline keeps me focused on what essential during busy times, positive during time, trying times and centered on the principle of real success. On my personal computer, I have now collected hundreds of quotes from great leaders, thinkers, poets, philosophers on subjects such as how to deal with adversity, the meaning of life, the value of self-importance, the importance of helping others, the power of art throughout, uh, throughout and the need for a strong character. Chapter 99 Love Your Work on the timeless, one of the timeless secrets to a long, happy life is to love your work. The golden thread running through lives of history, most satisfied people is that they loved what they did for a living. When psychologist Vera John Steiner interviewed 100 creative people, she found that they all had one thing in common, an intense passion for their work. Spending your days doing work that you find rewarding, intellectually challenging and fun will do more than all spa vacations in the world to keep your spirits high and your heart engaged. Thomas Edison, a man who recorded 1,093 patients in his lifetime, ranging from the phonograph, the incandescent in light bulb and the microphone to the movies, had this to say about his brilliant career, I never did a day's work in my life, it was all fun. When you love your job, you discover you will never be have to work another day in your life. Your work will be play and ours will slip away as quickly as they came. As novelist James Michener told, the master in the art of living makes little distinction between his work and his play, his labor and his leisure, his mind and his body, his information and his recreation, his life and his relation. Religion. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision to excellence at whatever he does, leaving others to decide whatever he is doing or playing. To him, he is always doing both. Chapter 100 Selflessly Serve Albert Schweitzer said, There is no higher religion than human service. To work for the common good is the greatest creed, and the ancient Chinese believed that a little fragrance that always clings to the hand that gives you roses. One of the greatest lessons for a highly fulfilling life is to rise from a little spent chasing success to one dedicated to finding significance. And the best way to create uh, significance is to ask yourself one simple question. How may I serve? All great leaders, thinkers, humanitarians have abundant selfish lives for selfless lives and in doing so found all the happiness, abundance and satisfaction they desired. They have all understood about that all-important truth of humanity. You cannot pursue success. Success ensures it flows as the unintended but inevitable byproduct of our lives spent by people and adding value to the world. Mahatma Gandhi understood the service ethic better than and most. In one memorable story from his life, he was traveling across India by train. As he left the car, he had been riding in on one of his shoes fell to a place about tracks well beyond his reach. Rather than worrying about getting it back, he did something that started his traveling companions. He removed another shoes and threw it to the wear on the rest. When he asked when asked why he did this, Gandhi smiled and replied, Now the poor soul who will find the first one will have a pair that he can wear. Last chapter 101 Live fully so you can die happily. Most people don't discover what life is all about until just before they die. 
while we are young we spend our days striving and keeping up with social expectation we are so busy chasing life's big pressure little pleasures that we miss out on the little ones like dancing barefoot in a park on a rainy day with our kids or planting a rose in a garden or watching the sun come up we live in an age where we have conquered the highest of mountains but have yet to master ourselves we have taller buildings but shorter tempers more possessions but less happiness fuller minds but emptier lives do not wait you until you are on your deathbed to realize the meaning of your life and the precious role you have to play within it all too often people attempt to live their lives backwards they spend their days striving to get the things that will make happy rather than having the wisdom to realize that happiness is not a place that you reach but to create happiness state you create happiness and a life deep fulfillment come when you commit yourself from the very core of your soul to spending your highest human talents on a purpose that makes a difference in others lives when all the clutter is stripped away from your life its true meaning will become clear to live for something more than yourself stated simply the purpose of life is a life purpose as this is the last of the life lessons it is my privilege to share with you in this book I wish you a great life filled with wisdom, happiness and fulfillment. May your day with be spent with work that is engaging on pursuits that are inspiring, inspiring and with people who are loving. I'd like to leave you with the following words of George Bernard Shaw which capture which capture the essence of the final lesson far better than I ever could. This is the true this is the true joy in life being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one being a true force of nature instead of a feverish little clod of the ailment and grievance complaining that world will not devote itself to making you happy i am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community and as long as i live it is my privilege to do whatever i can i have want to be truly used up when i die for the harder i work the more i live i rejoice in the life of its own sake life is no brief candle to me it is a sort of splendid torch which i've got to hold up for the moment i want to make it burn slightly as possible before handing it on to the future generation so friends this was the tremendous best book ever robin sharma who will cry when you die if you want to listen more audio books like this don't forget to comment in the comment section and don't forget to like share and subscribe the video happy learning and happy reading bye bye